grass is fine. <laughs> Everything's where it should be. And if the evening before I went to get the checkup is any indication, everything internally is working just fine, too. Nice. It'd be nice if I could be on solid ground sometime today. That would be neat. <laughs> we get you. The last time I coughed, I had to... Uh, oh. You ever do that? <laughs> oh, jeez. And you got to run to the... Oh, just Monday. Oh, man. Good morning. It's the Bob and Tom Show. There's Christy Lee at the Hi. news desk. Christy has her, uh, looks like the uh, uh, emblem off the front of your car on, 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 <laughs> on a necklace. That's what I it came like. in second. See, silver. Oh, oh the silver medal. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, Pat Godwin, our own uh, medal-winning uh, pole vaulter. Yes. Hey, well, thank right? you. There's Josh Arnold. Jay, good to see you, man. Good to see you. He's at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Gee. There's Willie Griswold. I like to use warm grains, quinoa specifically. That helps tighten up my movements. So I don't know what I took, but uh, they've updated it or juiced it up or something because it normally, honestly, I have to back up like eight hours what they can tell normal people because it takes a while for my system mm -hmm. to Cleanse. react to laxatives this thing it was 90 minutes oh <laughs> clear white liquid uh yes it was clear chalky white liquid i've got the berry i got the berry oh, flavor what nice. do you think about that that's yeah. nice how no, much what, did you have to drink let's could we start at the beginning uh, you a, a chick had a, a medical exam that requires a uh, evacuation of the internal bowel system yes. and yeah they give you like a it used to be you had to drink that giant jug. Right. A whole, it was like 64 ounces or something. Yeah. Like I, and uh, it was just awful. Yeah. But now, it, as I recall, it's essentially a glass of water. I took two Dulcolax and a spoon, a cup, a cap full of uh, this uh, l l white liquid. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the, huh. stuff, the stuff I had, I can remember my doctor, uh, she said, um, this will, uh, in 30 minutes, it'll activate. And I mean, it was 29 minutes and 52 <laughs> seconds. And I, all of a sudden, I went, wait a minute. And uh, it was over in about 10 minutes. You know what I bet it is? I just don't, this just dawned on me. Josh knows a little bit. Uh, nanobots is what's in this. Yeah, thing. absolutely. And they just yeah. haven't told us. Those were a big uh, plot point in uh, the movie Agent Cody Banks Part 2 <laughs> ah, with nanobots. Frankie Muniz. I yeah. see. Is now that Destination London? Yeah, he goes over to Europe and things get really wacky over there. Oh, guys. he makes a good movie. I'll, I'll put Big Fat Liar up against oh, any movie one. ever released. Da -da 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 -da. Um, da -da -da -da. So I'm lost. I don't know what happened. Where are we? What are we talking about now? Big Fat Liar. Never heard of it. <laughs> Never it's Paul it. Giamatti. It's a great movie. I'm sure, it's a great movie. I thought we were talking about your vowels. No, then. Oh, I'm sorry. Welcome <laughs> to your first day to on the. About. Welcome <laughs> to your first day on the show, Tom. That's right. So you're okay though. They did the checking and. Yeah. Do you have any pictures? Uh, no, it's MRI. I never had uh, to evacuate for an MRI, but evidently they've. You, have you seen an ultrasound recently, by the way, with a baby? And the three D ones. It looks like a picture from pennies. It's oh. unbelievable. Oh. Yeah, they're weird. And a lot of it's, you don't go to the hospital to get them. You go to like a third market kind of place and like a, right? a strip mall, and it's two fifty. Yeah, know that. yeah. But there was no insertion. There was no. If that's what you're looking for, there was no probing oh, that you know of. <laughs> I did fall asleep in the MRI, something. That's no, that's, that's when they get you. It's just like they do with the <laughs> UFOs, right, Josh? Mm-hmm. Or do you take a nap the next thing you know? You're... Hey, look, if we took it, if we found an alien, you don't think we'd be probing it? Heck yeah, we would. It's only fair that they probe that's us. That's right. You don't think those aliens would kill you and your whole family? Of course they would. <laughs> uh, coming up, we have um, legitimate Sasquatch news involving a uh, state Le state government. Le okay. Legitimate. It's work. Legitimate. Yeah. I mean, it's a... It's a uh, uh, legislative law. Good. Well, isn't there a state in there, or maybe a couple states, that have uh, Bigfoot crossings, the signs? On the <laughs> yeah, highway? yeah. Yeah. Josh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I read a whole article yesterday about how drones are making it much easier to spot these figures of cryptozoologies. Really? Now, with drone footage, now we're getting more shots of, of Sasquatch, of chupacabras. Mm. Interesting. I haven't seen any drone footage of those. I saw one of a chupacabra down there in, uh, where was it? Uh, not Portugal. Some, some Paraguay, I believe. Man, that thing was convincing. Okay. Huh. Scary, mm. scary stuff. Yeah, you don't want to mess with that. Uh-huh. <laughs> are, they, are they the traditional out-of-focus shot, even from the satellite? <laughs> even from the drone. <laughs> Very hard to fly a drone. Hey, I saw that Loch Ness video the other day. That looks... I, I'm convinced there's something in that lake, and it looks like a dinosaur. Look looked like a duck. It looked like... 
<laughs> you know how big ducks were back when they were dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> These things were ten stories. Quack! Yeah. <laughs> they Yo, did quack! Whole, whole loaves of Wonder Bread they Damn ate back right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you missed some really interesting things in the news yesterday. Tell me, please. I, I, I'm fascinated by this one um, because I don't know how your hearing is. But mine, um, I have some issues because I've been wearing headphones professionally for 40-plus years. It's bumpy, yeah. And if you've gone to a lot of rock shows, you know what I'm talking about. Your your hearing can be a little bit be a little bit roughed up. They're um, doing something on Amazon Prime called Dialogue Boost, which they've taken the... Oh, uh, I read this, yeah. The mix of... I'm, I'm sure I can describe this. They take the... the, the, the this, it takes the mix of the music and the dialogue at the same time, and it drops the music and stuff so you can hear. Exactly. You can hear what's actually being spoken. I know a lot of us end up leaving on the closed captioning just to I figure out. I can't watch that. anything without it anymore. Hey, uh, I'm going to rewatch everything everywhere all at once or something. I'm sure I missed, I don't know how much yeah. of that movie. Yeah, Because there's Good a, point. a million things going on at the same time. Man. I missed it. Yeah. Yeah, it just, and sometimes they do it deliberately. What is his name? Paul, what's his name, does it? And uh, I thought Nolan... Christopher Nolan is big on that. He, you don't need to hear what they're saying, just that they're acting or something like that, oh. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like to hear what they're saying. Well, it's super irritating. I, aren't a lot of these movies mixed for, like, Dolby, for in-the-theater experience, where it, the dialogue hits you a little bigger because it's different speakers, and that's why the mix is off? I've heard that in the past. That's actually exactly correct for part of it. But in, in any event, there will be, in the future, there'll be different options for the right. mix. But right now, it's starting with, um, according to Variety, at, at, at they're going to start at Amazon with um, uh, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, The Big Sick, Being the Ricardos, and other shows. So you'll be able to tweak it so you can hear it a little bit better. It'd be cool if you could change other elements of the mix. Like a lot of, you know, movies, the soundtrack is just a bummer. It'd be cool if you could take out those sad songs, put in like Funky Cold Medina, just something to get the people a little bit happy. <laughs> There's a guy on Instagram. He's called Cinemaphile or something. And he, you know, music makes all the difference. And he switched music with these famous scenes. Of, you know, it's pretty <laughs> funny. You know, oh, uh, I'm a clown. Is that you think I'm a clown? And he put like, uh, like Tone Loke, Wild Thing underneath it. It's, <laughs> it's it's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, well, I just was reading the, the most famous use of pop songs in movies, and one of them it was Layla. Mm -hmm. The great Eric Clapton classic. Goodfellas? Goodfellas, Goodfellas yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the classic, uh, yeah. uh, taking a great song and placing it in an unusual spot on a movie. In, in any event... Um, and he the, uses the piano part. It's, of course, it's not the the riff at the start. He, when they find those guys, people dead. They, Bobby Whitlock. Yeah. No, actually, that's that's an Jim interesting, Gordon. obscure thing. And very controversial. Yeah. Um, the uh, That's credited to the drummer. Who died, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon. He's the guy that oh, huh. killed his mom oh. with a ball-peen hammer. It's oh, yeah. Awful what? story. I, I've, I've felt a kinship with him. Oh, my gosh. Him. Yeah, it's a terrible I, story. I, 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 I might have known what he was going through. Oh. He's the drummer in, in the Derek and the Dominoes, the whole Eric Clapton thing. But he has been in, he's been in a prison or mental hospital for whatever 30 plus years when you said it was controversial i had no idea that's how it was controversial <laughs> no, it's, oh, and it was controversial worse. because um uh the story is they came back to the studio in miami and he was playing that da, 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 thing and then they ended up incorporating into the song mm -hmm. well uh, rita coolidge is actually the person that wrote that they say mm. she says that uh, a couple of other witnesses mm -hmm, say that yeah. But she doesn't get the incredible amount of royalties from it. But in any event, it's a nice piece in the movie. So be looking for uh, something on your TV pretty soon called um, Dialogue Boost. I'm working on a thing. It's uh, <laughs> called Dialogue Reduce. Oh, <laughs> oh and, boy. Uh, Careful. When, when politicians come on, ah. it, uh, ah. switches to Looney Tunes. <laughs> That's what it just makes it that much Overture. more palatable. All the heights. <laughs> this is that we'll hit the heights. All the heights. Do they have, a, hit. Do they have moaning boosts in porno? I, no, they don't. Would you like to see that? No, no. You don't like to, <laughs> do, do, are you a, when you watch your pornos? Do you like the audio up or down? I no. Yeah, I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They have. 
This is a stupid question, but do they have closed captioning porno? They yes. do. We, God damn it. We've talked about this 15 <laughs> times. <laughs> they do have Long closed, show, Josh. They do have closed captioning porno. It's really porno. fun. I like to mute it, turn on the closed captions, and then I kind of just do karaoke with my pals all together. It's a really good time. <laughs> so you put this music under uh, an adult cinema. <laughs> that changes it. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, I don't watch any. I don't watch anything on TV without closed caption. I absolutely don't. I'm with Chick. I don't do it. I won't. I won't do it. Okay, uh, in English. <laughs> well, no, you. you what's that? Uh, all quiet on the Western Front? Didn't you have some weird uh, dialogue chosen, like English and German subtitles? Or no, something? I no, I didn't. No, I think speaking German, but I had the English subtitles. Oh, okay. all right. Yeah, right now, I want to talk about uh, freshening up your life by freshening up your food life, if you will, your food lifestyle. Hello Fresh has some great ideas. Your taste buds have been calling you lately, going, uh, "Boy, we're tired of the same restaurants. We're tired of the same home cooking. Why don't we shake it up a little bit without having to go on a giant adventure?" Venture to the store with a list, searching the whole place for ingredients. That's where HelloFresh comes in. They do the shopping. Oh, they do the inventing. They create these recipes, more than 40 every week from expert chefs. And they're designed, in some cases, to be put together in as few as 15 minutes. What am I talking about? Well, all kinds of recipes. Whatever you're into, for example, they've got vegan stuff. They've got um, uh, a good old-fashioned comfort food. Whatever you want, they're probably going to have at any given time. Plus, you can swap the proteins, et cetera, et cetera. And you're guaranteed freshness. So they go to the grocery store. They supply the food. They supply the uh, the cards with the exact recipe and uh, how-to. So if you don't know the difference between a raisin and a plum, you can just look at the picture and go, oh, these go here. Uh, should I have gone more broad there, Josh? The, the difference between a, a, a pomegranate and a, a cherry? I no, guess no good. one's that stupid. Okay, good. Um, Hello Fresh. They know that you're smart enough to have some fun, and that's why we're going to try it out. And, uh, Willie, what's the latest over there? Check out the Italian chicken and pepper sandos with potato wedges and garlic sauce. Hello Fresh sends you 11 ingredients. Put those together in about 30 minutes and only six easy steps. You will be enjoying this delicious Hall of Fame meal that you made at home with help from Hello Fresh. Chef Craft foolproof have some fun and uh, by the way today they've got this special thing it's 50 percent off plus your first box ships for free if you use this code bt show 50 hellofresh.com slash bt show 50 that's bt show 50 at hellofresh.com slash bt show 50 coming up in sports uh, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs. Max Scherzer might have got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Uh, are the A's moving? And uh, um, an email just for Tom. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Just for you. Always a pleasure to get mail. Yes. And a couple things we got to catch you up that uh, catch catch you up on that you may have missed. Uh, and uh, coming up, a world record. He's back, David Rush. Whoop back in the news. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you. Oh, no. You're talking. Matt Kirshen is with us in the studio, and uh, Matt is uh, from London, England. That's hello. Right. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello Goofler. <laughs> I, I, I never knew he spoke like that. I had no idea well, until you, I came over here. You talk like, funny, don't you? <laughs> I've been doing it wrong for like over 20 years. Like, hello, how are you? I'm, I'm just a friendly chimney sweep. <laughs> Call yeah. Blarmy Mary Poppins. Let's have a tea party on the ceiling. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, the real joy of doing this, by the way, is I could do this impression in front of Americans and half of you cannot tell the difference uh, between my normal accent and the funny one. Uh, <laughs> like, I, like, I know that because I've done that voice in the middle of gigs and I could just be there going, hello, how are you? And then like, I don't get this joke at all. I do not see what he's doing. He says some things in an English accent and then he says some more things in an English accent. <laughs> how is this comedy? Please explain to me. Well, uh, we're talking with, with uh, Matt Kirshen. He is from uh, London. In the in the, did you grow up in the city of London? I grew up in the outskirts of London. Yeah, mm -hmm. suburbs, if you will. Suburbs, very suburban. Scotland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the cities they live. Hampshire yeah. on the fortnight or yeah. something. Uh, yeah, what's what's you, the name where of the town you were in? I was in Northwood, which is very unimpressive. Oh, no. Does and that then go Watford, on, then is, Stanmore. Is that, on the, is that on the subway or tube line? It is just it, is. It's just on the like very on the edge. The very fringe. Is it very, near, very fringe. Is it near Sherwood? 
It is in no way to okay. show it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Could you please live near someplace we can, you know, fantasize? Have you ever seen Sherwood Forest? Yeah. Have you ever seen Daffy yeah. Duck as Robin Hood? Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> That's the greatest. Every day. That, uh, that's just my uh, life trip, back home. Trip, 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 So did you go on a, to one of those all-boys schools where you have to wear a little suit every day? Or? <laughs> oh, yeah, and, you, you know, you have to play rugby. And, yeah. yeah. Dude, if you, and you have to keep going, they're going to ask if you know Harry Potter. Defend yourself, sir. No thanks, had a few beers before I came in. <laughs> have any experience? I don't even have an appointment. <laughs> they always ask you questions where they try to make you sabotage yourself. Have you noticed that? They're like, so tell us, where do you think you could use improvement? As if you're going to say, well, I am seething with hostility. <laughs> I've got a debilitating character flaw. I cannot stop throwing staple guns. <laughs> Does this look like ringworm to you? <laughs> you know. Tell us about yourself. Well, I've got pink eye and my foot's asleep. <laughs> got matching silverware for the plate in my head. I think I can fly. <laughs> I collect ointment. <laughs> what can you bring to our company? Headlights. <laughs> when do you see yourself in five years? Next to you, the dumpster behind the airport. <laughs> Where do I start? How do you like my weight belt? Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The sign said anybody caught trespassing <laughs> will be shot on sight. So I jumped over the fence and yelled at the house, Hey, what gives you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually uh, I have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right, well, check out. Uh -huh. mm. uh, in my fantasy, I'm making love to this woman, yeah. and then all of a sudden she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety <laughs> first. <laughs> Are you, uh, are you a single guy? I used to be married, but I'm divorced now. Yeah, my marriage wasn't working out. I, I was driving down the road one day, and my wife ripped the rearview mirror out of the windshield and beat me in the head with it. <laughs> what? Why? You'd have thought nobody had ever made love to her sister. <laughs> oh, but I'm fine. <laughs> she was just as bad. Yeah. She, she used to brag, I can count the number of men I've been to bed with on one hand, and then she'd do it too. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty. My most recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmunds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> wow. Uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. Ah, uh, yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm -hmm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from, by the way? Patterson, from Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, sure. That's famous. Yeah, boy. you know, small, sure. thugged out town. You mm -hmm. know, it's tiny. So small, we used to get robbed by people we knew. <laughs> small. People were like, stick them up. I'm like, Andre? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell your mother, man. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, how is Aunt Carol? Uh, <laughs> <she did>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come down for dinner. <laughs> Bob and Tom. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi, Chick. Hi, there's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Hey, there's Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chick. Hey, there's Ace Cosby. Howdy. Howdy, indeed. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, back in the air chair. And here's <laughs> Tom Griswold. Got a couple interesting uh, letters here. Um, if, if you were to walk in the studio... Yeah, yeah. Or if you if you were watching on the cameras at any given time, it might look a little odd. 
Willie, do you want to explain what just happened? Your thoughts on? I just walked in, and Mark Mike was kind of almost on his knees. My dad's mm-hmm. standing up, and Mark was kind of checking at his foot. Ooh. Huh. I couldn't tell what was happening, and I go, "Oh no." My dad is finally making yeah. kissing his feet yeah. mandatory for all employees. <laughs> That's when you truly go. You're you're all, ha, more than halfway around the bend. But if you uh, start, yeah, that, you'll no, be all the way around. I, I have some new shoes on. Yes, I didn't know the name of them, and I wanted him to read the read the tab. How do you like them? Did you find They're out? They're great. They're called like Babooks or something. B- Chick recommended them, and I B- bought them online. Yeah, B A A B U K. They're uh, they're uh, wool and uh, yeah. Let me see them. They're pretty nice. Babooks. Babook. I had Baba Dukes for a while. They were just <laughs> yeah, no sure good to have in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find them, and then they're they're laying on me on my bed. It's weird. <laughs> but if but if what you walked in here, you'd walk over here, and you'd see I've got a bunch of notes here and a bunch of things lying around. There's a huge uh, written here: panties at night. Yeah, I, I wear my panties at and this night. All started, You're not supposed to. This all started with Christy yep. saying, uh, well, again, do you want to set this up for me? Yeah, I was told um, by my mother that you should not wear underwear at night. You need to let it breathe. See, I didn't understand that she meant in bed. Yeah, when you go to bed at night and do your jam. <laughs> I thought she meant you just don't wear panties, you know, after 5 o'clock. Oh, so, it is considered goat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, no, I, I, I'm not kidding. I, no, I, no white bells, after, uh, belts and, after Labor Day. And it, 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 it changed my point of view of your mom, certainly. Uh, my mom in her day, I'm sure. I'm right. sure, but I just thought, well, that's really a weird thing. And, and, and then I found out you meant in bed. You You're right. You don't wear underwear to bed. And, uh, and a lot of women have heard the same thing from but, their mother or family. <laughs> you use the phrase, <laughs> air it out. Air it out. Um, here, this is from Greg. He says, I understand Pat is astutely aware of things going on during the show. You occasionally miss some of the comments of the sniper. The sniper. <laughs> uh, he's probably already working on something, but, um, uh, he suggests something about, um, um let it breathe, uh, regarding Christie's airing out of the, uh, of the downstairs. Yeah. Well, I'm shaken by this. I had a, I had a weird dream last night. You oh, did? oh my, yeah. About this story. Really? No, it's really stayed with me. Here we go. Here. <laughs> when I went to sleep, so very tired, Christie's mother came to me, Whoa. saying, please take off your boxers, let it breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how she got in my bedroom, is standing right in front of me, let loose the anaconda, let it breathe. <laughs> let it breathe, let it breathe like a fine wine, let it breathe. Like Christie's poulet fousse. Let it breathe. <laughs> so, Tom, I just couldn't get it out of my hand. <laughs> that, is a, that is a dream. What a great use of poulet fousse, too. I like yeah. that. I was more impressed that your mom showed up asking to see the <laughs> Godwin Anaconda. It was a dream. It was said. a dream. Uh, On my part, it was a dream. You know, uh, would, might have been her dream. Might have been. Have to, she's the one talking about airing it out. That's. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. That's very nice, Pat. Very good, Pat. Um, and uh, thanks for the letter, Greg. Uh, a great suggestion. Always appreciate your, appreciate your letters. Uh, Josh, how do you get a hold of us? Oh, my gosh. Use the email, Bob and Tom at bobandtom.com, or the app. It's free. It's out there. Don't cost nothing. Nope. Uh, now, we were also talking about um, getting uh, th- uh, shower habits and, mm-hmm. and, and being naked and various issues. Um, you don't like to be naked, do you? No, he hates it. Yeah. I don't have my mouth. You like to wear. You ever just walk around naked? Right now, I can't. Why? Because I'm in a new house and the curtains aren't all up. Who who the hell's going to look in your windows? Hey, uh, you should be comfortable with your body. Uh, You tell people, enjoy the show. (laughs) Yeah. He used to be a big, he'd walk around naked. And the fun thing is he would do it kind of like after his bedtime. But his bedtime, really early, right? Right, Yeah. When I was growing up, 7.30 on weekends. So I'm 14. I've got a couple pals over. Sure. Dad comes walking around the corner like Ebenezer Scrooge looking for a problem. He's pantless. He's got a little flashlight he's holding. In today's world, that's the first thing you learn as a parent. Yeah. The first thing you learn is, you, I didn't, I didn't wear, you know, pajamas until, until I have kids because if, if they have a sleepover, the last thing you want to be is in the front page of the paper. Well, he apparently exposed himself. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you'll suddenly have to start locking Oof. doors and 
you know, being, being very careful. One of the many qualities of dogs, though, that we all love is that they don't care if you're naked. Nope. You well, get up, walk around, go to the garage. I do that all the time. They look at you like, I don't even know how you wear that stuff. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at last, you're one yeah, of us. Let's good for you. Yeah. You, could, you could take your dog, put a leash on him, <laughs> go to the mall naked, mm -hmm. and walk, start walking around. Why are they cuffing dad? And when, <laughs> when you, uh, if you uh, change coll collars on your dog, do you go, oh, you're naked when the collar's off? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's a uh, okay. thing that's kind of like this. I, I do that. I've been sick. Oh, go ahead. Um, this is, um, this comes to us from Tony. Tony. Um, he goes, when the 6.6 uh, .6 San Simeon earthquake struck in 2003 in December, it was about 11.15 in the morning. I was in the shower. I jumped out, wrapped a towel around me, and ran outside. 20 minutes later, the shaking stopped. I came back to the house. My brother called me. I answered the phone. I realized that the toothbrush I had been brushing with in the shower was still in my mouth. <laughs> huh. That incorporates two things we were talking about. Wow. Christy finds it disgusting to brush your teeth in the shower. Yes. I don't see a problem with that at all. Me either. I do. And uh, It's just the warm water. Ugh. But the fact that he didn't even realize it was in there because of the <laughs> trauma going on because the, 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 the earth is opening up around you. Hmm. Um, so um, we also had a whole survey about things people do in the shower. I'm somewhat skeptical of some of those numbers, particularly the... Uh, uh, dropping of a grumpy in the shower. And and 12, 12, 12, 12 percent. I don't see myself doing the waffle stomp. I think it's higher. I don't do that. Drain. I think it's People higher than People don't no. do that. I don't. I, no. You guys are living in a fool's I'd like paradise. to know if the question was, do you do this or has it ever happened? Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Yeah. 12 yeah, percent makes more sense if it's... If it's yeah. an accident, yeah. if you're ill or something right. and you've... Yeah. Yeah, and the and the, the urination numbers were suggesting that women were more likely to urinate in a shower than a guy. Well, that's because no kidding. we can't normally yeah. do it. I think. Oh, so it's a thrill to be standing Heck up. Yeah, that's wow. Yeah. I do it's an even it bigger all thrill the to time. be down there underneath, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Fire away, no, chief. It's not <laughs> not my thing, but I I would never judge. <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> you're, uh, you're a golden showers guy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, Pandora's box. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Dog Pandora's box. Pete on me. Why you got all these tarps in your garage, Josh? You go camping a lot with these tarps? So many tarps. My goodness. Is that a deal breaker, Christy? Like what? third date in, fourth date in, you guys are, hey, let's take a shower. Okay. Hey, uh, will you pee on me? And you go, nope, get your stuff. Get out. Good. Well, I've never faced that. Yeah. Don't nope. that necessarily be in the face. It could be <laughs> over the shoulder. Start in the leg or something. I mean, because in the... Knock on wood, I, I've in never the, had that. In the shower, he could be peeing on you, and you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't know. Yeah. Oh, right. that's, oh, that was an old standard at the uh, at the swimming pool as a kid. What? I got peed on in the oh, shower yeah. in high school football. I know the name of the guy. I know where he works to this day. Are you serious? Yep. Man. I'm, I'm coming for you, I've Denver. Never... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember, you turd. Wow. Okay, well. Thank uh, God it wasn't that, by the way. <laughs> on a, on a yeah. different note, today is 420. Oh. We opened up with uh, Craig Shoemaker's classic tribute to celebrity marijuana. We'll feature some other marijuana. Actually, there's a couple of marijuana news stories. Um, one is a really confusing one involving the police in Pennsylvania. But uh, we also have some stuff in the world of sports. What's going on over there? Well, we've got this email. Were you guys talking about Bob Feller yesterday? Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, dear Tom, and you were a Bob Feller fan, right? The Cleveland Indians. Bob well, Feller. when I was a little boy. Yeah. Well, that's. I, what, I mean, I think his sons went to school near me. I'm a distant relative of Bob Feller. This is from John. I never oh. met the guy, but I think he was cousins with my grandpa. My dad told me that same story about the motorcycle as a kid. And there's a video. They, they'll do the story quickly. Before they had a radar gun. Yeah. Yeah, before they had the so-called jugs gun, they did a <laughs> stunt, and there's a movie of it you can see. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, well, how, how do I explain this? Uh, it, it, Bob Feller throws a pitch, and as he throws it, they have a motorcycle going by, timed at whatever it was, certain miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And then they've got these two... Um, big paper targets right. to the kind when the team runs out in the field and they blast through the paper. Sure. Mm -hmm. They have two of those. So when you, you see the motor, here it is. Then you see, the, is. you see the motorcycle go through it, but you see Feller's ball go through it before. Oh, look at that old timey motorcycle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, 
And Bob, he's wearing a tie. Very, uh, <laughs> rapid, rapid Robert. There he is. He has a somewhat of a lisp Whoa. too. Yeah, I, th I think he it was. I think it was a dinner thing. He kind of talked like this. Really? Yeah, but here that we're watching the video now in the studio, hmm. and they've got the. It, it looks like a Buster Keaton movie. Oh, he's going kind of jumpy black like and white. Eighty-five miles an hour, or and so? he's a. It's a police officer. Yeah, and Feller oh. throws it faster than the guy's going eighty-five. So it's pretty cool. There's a great documentary out there called Fastball, where they, they uh, prove that Nolan Ryan is through the hardest ever, I think. And it was like 118 miles an hour. Oh, before, my God. Before they could accurately measure it. Poof. Something like that. Anyway. <laughs> Ow. Um, Good band, Fastball, by the way. Oh, yeah. A fire escape and um, mm, The nice, Way. Nice to, oh, The Way. Uh, this continues. I didn't believe the motorcycle story, but my dad insisted it was true. Uh, they had the motorcycle going 100 miles an hour. And uh, Feller, yeah. Through 104. Miles. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, and Josh, when he, I, I was telling the story because I would, I'd been reading about it, and Josh thought it was a fake, and I did. Then I thought it probably is. It just sounds too good to be true. But it, there's a video of it. I am glad to know it happened. Pretty cool, kind of fun, uh, nice demonstration. Uh, better than just a Jugs gun, seeing the motorcycle on the flat. And, the and how did that get the name Jugs gun? We were talking about that. It probably the uh, inventor was probably Jugs. Someone named Jugs, I would assume. <laughs> I think the inventor's it's wife. It's a whole brand, Jugs. No, the inventor's wife had huge cans. I oh, okay, well, that. yeah, but then she, they made a brand out of it because it, they were worth celebrating. Dude, forget a t-shirt can and get me a Jugs gun. Right. I don't know how it works. I don't know if it shoots a lady, hmm. but... <laughs> I want to know how they put a football in there and make it go. And they do, all the time. They have to adjust the spinning wheels, but you put a football in there and it uh, mimics a punt. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know That's different than the Jugs gun. Yeah, the That's jugs the radar gun. gun. It's jugs the gun. same. It's but the, the Jugs same. machine is the throwing machine. But it's the Spinning. same company. Yes. It's same same brand. Huh. What I've been... Josh is, Josh is having a tough time this morning. <laughs> he's, mad, he's mad at me. Now he's mad at you. I'm not mad at anybody. Well, if I'm mad at anybody, it's me. <laughs> Putting myself in this position. <laughs> you mean, so, uh, that, so what you're saying is showing up. <laughs> you could, you you could be waking up right now, go take a piss, and be getting ready for tonight's show somewhere, yeah. right? Instead of... Here's man, uh, on a July night six years ago, I could have made a decision. <laughs> and now I'm... I'm I'm stuck with these fools. Boy, oh I could boy. be sleeping in a hotel somewhere. Yeah, Work only working three uh, days a week. Let me get this a long uh, and clean this T-shirt. I, I don't think I'd pick that life either. Be, <laughs> I'd be in a cabin. I'd be working at some. I'd be logging somewhere. Logging, yeah. logging. Yeah. Oh, that's You'd be writing somewhere. Probably. Okay, well, let's uh, move forward here with some sports, please. Uh, NBA action. <laughs> Oh, now he's Whoa. irritated at me. Do you feel this? Do you, know <laughs> Do you feel this? Xavier Tillman uh, scored a career-high 22 points, 13 boards. They call rebounds boards, Tom, in the sports sports game. The Memphis Grizzlies tied their first-round Western Conference Series in Game of Peace. They beat the Lakers last night, 103-93. And there were a couple of players in the Grizzlies who uh, asked, uh, they were asked, how was it guarding uh, LeBron James? He had like seven points last night or something, and the the kid, the kid from Memphis goes, I don't care. He's old. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll see what happens the next Laker-Grizzly game. Uh, Brooke Lopez, he's a twin, uh, scored 25 points. Drew Holiday had 24. And uh, Bucks withstood Giannis's absence, and they beat the Heat last night in Milwaukee, 138-122. And Jamal Murray, 40 points. Michael Porter Jr. had 13. You know I don't care for Michael Porter Sr. Oh, no, you have problems? Oh. oh, boy. The kid, he's nice. Uh, anyway, the Denver Nuggets passed the Timberwolves 122-113. They take a two-game to none lead in that one. And the Oakland A's have announced, Tom, that they've signed a binding agreement to purchase land for a new retractable roof ballpark in Las Vegas Ooh. after being unable to build a new venue in the Bay Area. Team President Dave Caval said Wednesday night that the team finalized the deal to buy a 49-acre site last week where the A's will plan to build a stadium that will seat between 30 and 35,000 fans close to the Strip. And, yes, it will have a retractable roof. That'll be great. The hottest I've ever been out out of doors on earth was in vegas going to the sushi restaurant <laughs> I, was, that? I was with you your 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 shoes stuck to the pay oh, oh. it was a bad deal uh the a's are working with uh, the august body of the clark county 
uh, commission in Nevada. <laughs> no, no, uh, it's totally on the up and up. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, the A's hope to break ground on the stadium and hope to be playing in their new home by 2027. So, hmm. I'm sorry if this is the first you're hearing about your A's moving, but apparently... That's exactly the case. And back to the original topic of our show, your A's moving okay again? Yeah, my A is fine. All it's right, All good. cleaned out, ready to go. Yeah, takes your head as a medical procedure. <laughs> if anybody wants to pee on my butt, I'm ready. A little, ex- like, little exploration. I've never done that before. See? That could be a fun See afternoon. I'm uh, bringing it all. How much big, weight did you lose? A big red bow. Oh, I don't know. But at one point, I didn't think it was going to stop. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my life now. Yep. Uh. I'm here. And then you get up and go down and lay down. Oh, second wave. Right back. Right think, back again. You think that the, that rocket that they're shooting off in Texas today had some <laughs> propulsion. <laughs> I'm hovering over the camp. But you know who was, was there for me? My puppy dogs. They were right yeah. there yeah. guarding me in case someone snuck up on me while I was on the turlet. Sure. Oh, yeah. They think they're doing oh, something. Do you want to give me the preview? What's More coming? sports coming up, including Max... Scherzer, is he a cheater? I think he is because he's got two different colored eyes. And uh, NHL playoffs also last night, Tom. All Exciting right. stuff. Last got night. some uh, cool fast food news. And um, my favorite story this morning is a little bit uh, on the dark side. Um, headline, Indian couple builds their own guillotine. Huh. Oh, why? why? Hmm. Well, cuts is... their, then cuts their heads off in sacrifice. Well, if... <laughs> Wait a minute, wait what a minute. What are you Well, doing? honey, it works. You go first. <laughs> well, no, it went like this. Well, hunt. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they had it designed. Why would so you they... tell us the story? Why? Well, that's not the story. That's just the headline. Oh, well, it's not head- headline. Well, lose it. <laughs> <laughs> just lose it, will you? Man. Now, go out and make it a great what day. What were they sacrificing? <laughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, for why? I don't want anything to do with a God that wants my head. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with some of these religious Holy things. Holy hell. <laughs> he said to do what? <laughs> what the hell? What the We were, we were going to go bowling tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's uh, what your bowling bag's for. Put your head in there. <laughs> this portion of the Bob and Tom Show is brought to you by our good friends, at Simply Safe. That's right. They're my good friends because I secure my compound with Simply Safe, the design it yourself, do it yourself home security system. It's designed with cutting edge technology and backed by 24 7 professional monitoring. You got an emergency? Well, agents at Simply Safe use proprietary fast protect technology to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real. You get priority police dispatch. And Simply Safe 24 7 pro monitoring service costs. Under a dollar a day, less than half the price of traditional home security systems. And you can lock and unlock your doors, access your cameras, check on your compound, arm and disarm your system from anywhere with the smartphone app. And by the way, CNET named Simply Safe the editor's choice for 2023. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafetom.com. If you go today, claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off your order with interactive monitoring. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Thank you very much. Check the reviews. Yes, They're sir. great. When we come back, we have uh, we have some good puppy dog news, Sasquatch news, oh. robot news, and um, <clears throat> guillotine <laughs> news. No. <laughs> yes. No, we're taking a vote. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I insist on hearing it. We'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll hold up a coin. Heads or tails. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Hey. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at 888-262-8661. More Bob and Tom next. State law. I had a moment where... Uh, my girlfriend thought she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And by the way, if you know, ladies, if you're uh, if you suspect that you're pregnant, tell the guy during the day. Don't wait until you're about to go to sleep. No, you know, because that's what she did. She's like, I have a cramp. I'm like, oh, I might be pregnant. Good night. Huh? I'm like, no, <laughs> night. I don't think so. I go, well, well, let's find out. Well, what are you gonna do? So I, you know, hauled butt to Walmart. Yep. And um, <laughs> got a test. Got yeah. myself a little test. Doctor yeah, in a stick. box. Two, yeah, I know. Two o'clock uh-huh. in the morning, and of all the times to get recognized. You know, I walk into Walmart in the night shift. 
Yeah, yeah. fluffy. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> what do you need? A miracle. Uh, <laughs> and so, all right, here's some tickets to a Grateful Dead concert. Right? All right. <laughs> so I found the aisle where they sell the pregnancy test, and I realized something. Walmart has figured out the evolution of how life works. And yeah. they put it in aisle four. As soon as you turn the corner, you see condoms. Uh-huh. Then you see lubricant. The next to the lubricant, you see pregnancy tests. The next to that, you see pampers. Next to that, formula. Oh, and yeah. at the end of the aisle, they sell beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full circle. I was part of the team that launched the first, the first low salt, low sugar peanut butter into the category. It was called Simply Jif. It was targeted towards diabetics. I wanted to call it Type 2 Peanut Goo. But... Yeah, of course you don't feel good, Greg. You ate an entire rotisserie chicken at 11.30 at night. You shoved the whole thing in your fat face in six minutes, Greg. I think he ate the rubber band that holds a legend out of it. Come on! My birth certificate? That document is 54 years old. I also don't have the Declaration of Independence. Because I don't know if you've ever seen an organic peanut butter kid go out the deep end. <laughs> it is not pretty. Okay, these kids... They spend 18 years eating it, then they go off to college. They have one bite of a Jif sandwich. Six weeks later, they're passed out on a park bench with Nutter Butters all over their face. It's a- Powerball jackpot Wednesday night. The winning ticket was sold at a get-go in Macedonia and is Ohio's fourth Powerball jackpot winner since joining the game in April of 2010. And if you're a Facebook user, and you have been since May 24, 2007, you can now apply for your share of $725 million privacy settlement that parent company Meta has agreed to pay. Meta's paying that settlement in a lawsuit alleging the world's largest social media platform allowed millions of its users' personal information to be fed to a company called Cambridge Analytica. It's not clear how much money you'll receive, and if you want to apply, you have to fill out a form, submit it online, or print it out and mail it in. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Todd. I take my kids out to right field, get away from the parents. I have my kids take a knee, keeps the dipsticks from picking the grass when I talk. I say, eyes on me, ears on the message, mind on the mission. Any kid that gets hurt needs to get up and rub dirt on it. Hell, I teach my kids. You see a line drive, charge it. That's what I did when I played. I charged line drives. Now, sure, when I eat sloppy joes down, my taste suck like metal, but that's baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Don't, 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 don't. Essential morning radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. For Batman, it was Batgirl. For Superman, it was Supergirl. And now... Meet Spider-Man's female counterpart. From Bob and Tom Productions, it's the superhero women have known about for years. All right, toots, this is a stick-up. Hand over all your money. Oh, dear. Yeah, come on, lady, hurry it up. Somebody's going to get hoit. Help! Oh, please help! Won't somebody help me? Let that young woman go, you two ruffians. Yeah? Who's going to make us? I am. <laughs> Come on, lady. You must be in your (laughs) mid-fifties. Yeah. What do you have going? Some kind of superpowers? Yes, I do. Take a look at these. Oh, gross. Let's get out of here. It's 
Spider Vein Woman. Oh, God, no! Spider Man got his superpowers from being bitten by a spider. Spider Vein Woman got her powers from working as a waitress for 17 years. Don't make Spider Vein Woman show you her legs because if she has to, she will. Look at this one. Uh, I think I'm gonna puke! Mm -hmm. Oh, here, hold my purse. I'll show you my hysterectomy scar. When you need help, call on the only superhero who wears long polyester pants, oh. comfortable support hose, and sensible shoes. She's Spider Vane Woman. Coming soon to a theater near you. Hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening to Bob and Tom. 24-7. Joining us in the studio, comedian Mark Eubanks. Did Oops. you go to college down in... Uh... I went to college in uh, University of West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh, really? I was a mountaineer. Hmm. Well, why would someone from Florida go to college in West Virginia? Uh, because you didn't have to be real smart to get into school there. <laughs> 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 Basically, showing up got you that piece of paper. Yeah. Oh. Valedictorian was a 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> On the breathalyzer. <laughs> <laughs> This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Details coming up. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. There's Pat Godwin <laughs> at the performance room. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of morning. Already. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Chick. Uh, there's Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Hello. Yeah, there's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. If you guys are in a weird mood, we can go to my place and get high for 420. Come back to a really bad show. That could be bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I, I do an edible right now. See what happens. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Off the air, having an odd discussion. And, um, Christy, I don't know if you heard this, but... but um, the uh, the paper sleeves, often corrugated, that um, circle a, uh, a cup from uh, various various coffee places. I'm sure. Trying to get this one off. Here we go. This this guy. You're yeah. weak as a kitten. Um, <laughs> and uh, there's a name for these. It's not just a sleeve. And we could not think of it then, Josh. What is it called? It. I I had to look it up. Zarf. Mm -hmm. Z a r f. Yes. That has to be made up. Now they're used in the Middle East, but and they're metal, so they're like they're actually th that word actually comes from. So it's a thing. Okay. Yeah, a thing. And uh, now it's because yeah. zarf sounds like like the final vomit before you die. <laughs> <laughs> well then, then he zarfed. A zarf. Uh, so there you go, kids. Something to something to brag about at the water cooler today. Coming up, we nice have a, a homemade guillotine. Uh, Let's not do that story. And, but I, I've got to hear Let's it. Let's do some pleasant sporting news. What have you got? Well, uh, maybe not. Uh, Max Scherzer, Mets pitcher, uh, pretty good up till now, evidently. But he was ejected from the Mets game in L.A. yesterday. Umpires did the customary check of his glove before the bottom of the fourth. Scherzer furious after being tossed for putting something on the ball. Mm. His glove was inspected, and the veteran right-hander already had been told by umpires to change his glove before he took the mound. One inning earlier in the bottom of the third, Scherzer clearly could be seen. It's rosin. It's rosin and sweat. There's nothing else on there. And he's been caught before putting something on the ball. And one of the umpires said, look, I've been examining gloves like this for almost five years. This is the stickiest glove I've ever seen. And when I touched his hand with my fingers, my fingers were stuck together for three innings. Ah, that's no good. So there's something wow. on there. Sounds that's... like Josh waking up every morning. <laughs> I love those nocturnal emissions. <laughs> fingers stuck oh, together. Which hand is stuck together the fingers? Left or right? Uh, left, remember? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yes, yeah, I'm a lefty. But uh, well, I'm a righty with everything else. You're a, a, you catch with so, you catch with the right so, one. So it's a, 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 a catch is right, Jack's left. I'm confused. Yeah, remember I broke my wrist. <laughs> Hang on, Christy's confused. Doing oh, that? Man. No, no, no. No, no. I'm not, I'm not that vigorous. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be in the medical journal. But I broke my wrist when I was like 14. You know, the the uh, the formative years, and so I had to had to learn how to do it lefty, and I never went back. <laughs> That's right, Christy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, do you find in intimate situations with a uh, partner 
that you are primarily also a uh, Southpaw? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's an interesting imprinting. I can unhook bras better with my left hand, despite the fact I'm right-handed. I can do it with both, but I'd rather with my left and hand. And with permission, really? let's be clarified. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I've never gone anywhere I, I wasn't wanted. <laughs> and, and wanted bad. It's no fun. You want to go where you're wanted. Yes. yes. My, my yes. favorite thing is the invitation. I love that invitation. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> and let me tell you, I tried the unwanted. And uh, <laughs> that takes a lawyer. A you got to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know why they're so expensive? Divorces are expensive because they're worth it. <laughs> but the ladies at the bridge table weren't pleased with your manual dexterity, oh. with your left-handed bra removal. I believe Christy Lee had a question. No, it's, it's past. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, it Come was on. about Max Scherzer, I believe. It was about pitching. Yeah. I don't understand. I would think that the, you'd want the ball to be released quicker, and if it were sticky, it would cause the ball to slow down. No, if you have something on the ball and it's you know, sticky or slippery, like you, can, ball. you can manipulate it or spin it a different way so it Wouldn't will it, react differently. It affects the, if, if there's a big wad of something on the ball, it affects the way the ball spins. So you're right. It can but, either be a loose release or it can be a sticky release. So yeah. it'd be a slower release, but it would be... Not necessarily. It's just you're gripping, you, you have a better, you okay. can spin the ball maybe more. Do you see what I'm saying, though? Because if it's sticky... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Josh, right. when you switched from right to left, did you find it? That you had a looser release, or <laughs> um, and you catch it with your right, right? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. That's what right I into the old like an ashtray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to my everything's easier when you do it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this really God. isn't the day to be picking on Josh. I think. <laughs> no, I'm, oh, you're, you're fine. fine. You're the only one. Yeah, and that doesn't help, by the way. I don't. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, later on, Wait, what happened to John? Oh, <laughs> remember, nothing puts me in a worse mood than yeah. when somebody says I'm in a bad mood. Oh, yeah, that's the you walk into a place. Are you okay? You look weird today. Oh, well, now I'm great. Thank you, yeah. Cody. Thank you very much. That's a lesson I can continue to forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right up there. We noticed. Uh, right up there. Hi, honey. Oh, you look tired. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wonder why I'm tired. <laughs> We were up fighting all night. Um, Honey, you look tired. And have you been gaining weight? <laughs> <laughs> Not a good breakfast. Have you ever do that? Start a fight in the middle of the night, and as you're fighting, you're getting dressed. <laughs> have you ever done that? Because I don't know what there is about nudity. but You don't yeah, like to fight right. nude? I don't like to fight. Wasn't that the rule you're supposed to get undressed? Yeah, you're fighting. Yeah, you're, it diffuses well, yeah, the situation apparently. Of course, the, that's really unpleasant for those of other folks at the produce section at Kroger. Sure. Uh, there's a guy over by the bananas taking his pants off, screaming at his wife. <laughs> I received a very nice compliment last evening from a, a woman of a certain age. She said, "You have a nice figure." You, haven't, you don't hear that very often anymore. It was very sweet. Oh. That Killer. is nice. You do have a nice figure. I use, a term, Killer figure. I use a term all the time that you never hear anymore. Uh, what? One of the dogs has gained a little weight. <laughs> so I'll look at her and I'll go, I'll talk for her going, sure. I'm reducing. <laughs> Remember that? Yes. Like a 50s thing. Sure. Well, so have you seen Zelda? She's reducing. Yeah. Uh, she, she just had the cottage cheese because she's <laughs> reducing. <laughs> but the one dog always says that to me, looks at me. So it's okay. Could I have more food? Uh, when we come back, we have more sporting news. Yes, we do. We have uh, interesting news about rats coming up. Uh, uh, interesting He's news a about rat. About Slurpees of all things, and um, building your own home guillotine, and then trying her out. Please, uh, okay. No, no good can come from this. Uh, that's a lesson. I think we need to learn something yeah, from this. Maybe, yes. Maybe you should read the religious practice more carefully. <laughs> This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel. One of the things I like about you is you, you don't uh, necessarily uh, lower your sights. When it comes to some of the things you do, you're willing to go out on a limb. Oh, I have no sights. I'm you're willing to go out blind. <laughs> you're willing to go out on a limb and do uh, do an impression that uh, perhaps most people aren't going to pick up on. I'm fearless, and I respect you for that. Thank you, be, especially when there's a high uh, a quality to the uh, to the message. And I, of course, you know I'm referring to uh, Gregory Peck. Oh yes, now, Gregory mm, Peck. Greg, for, Gregory, Gregory, Peck. Gregory Peck. Not familiar to everybody necessarily. Mm. A brilliant actor. Not everyone uh, knows who he is. That's right. 
But if, if, if there was a period of time in which he, he was a big leading man, mm -hmm. he was one he, of the biggest stars in Hollywood, and he was in something you don't see much anymore unless you look hard, and that that is what I would call an important movie. Yeah, sure. there are a lot of great movies out there. Usually, The Omen, independent movies. No, Boys from Brazil. To one Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, oh, that I don't one. mean the. Oh, okay. But you know what I'm saying. There are a lot of great movies out there these days, but they, they tend to kind of you got to look for them. A lot of the stuff that gets a lot of publicity is just a bunch of crap with yeah. a bunch of crashes and the same old junk. But mm -hmm. Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird yeah, was a great film. One of yeah. the great films of all time. And, yes. and you you do one of the few tributes to it. Well, yeah, it, it's, it's a great movie. You learn a lot about tolerance and diversity sure. from it and stuff. And, but it was made in like 1960 or whatever. Yeah. And America has changed a lot since. And there's a lot of new, a lot of groups in this country. Not even just racial or ethnic groups. But groups of people who define themselves a certain way. And you know, a new one pops up every week. We're like, all right, we're weird, but you better like us or mm -hmm. you're a jerk. Like, all right, we'll write you down on the list. Yeah. If they made To Kill a Mockingbird, now it'd be like 10 hours long to cover all these different groups. <laughs> <laughs> how true. Atticus Finch would be out there tell his little daughter, Now, Scout, remember how I told you that black folks are just the same as we are and were to treat them with respect. Well, the same goes for these Shiite fundamentalists who just moved in across the streets. <laughs> they just believe different things than we do. Mm -hmm. So if you see them out there stoning one of their women to death for sneezing on Wednesday, you pay them no mind. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes a nosy nelly. Uh. <laughs> and in this house over here live coprophiliacs. <laughs> Those are people who derive sexual pleasure from human feces. <laughs> Now, just, for, <laughs> just yeah. because they're unrepentant dump truckers and we're not doesn't mean that we are somehow better than they are. Yeah. They work hard like all Americans to put food on their table <laughs> so they can eat it and poop it out and have sex. I don't know how it works. I don't want to know how it works. You just have to be tolerant. <laughs> no Oscars for that movie. No. no. Uh, Mike so. McRae. How about that? <laughs> Cubs beat Oakland, Milwaukee beat Seattle, Baltimore over Washington. American League winners, Cleveland, Texas, Minnesota, the Yankees, and Houston. The National League, your winners, the Cardinals, San Francisco, Pittsburgh, the Mets, and San Diego. And the NHL playoffs yesterday, Florida, Dallas, and Edmonton win in regulation. And the Hurricanes in overtime beat the Islanders. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? Essential morning radio. All day and all night. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, my. Just look at that. What am I going to do? Uh, what's wrong, honey? Look. Look in the mirror, all that gray. Boy, did it sneak up on me. <laughs> no, it didn't. You mean it's been gray for a long time? <laughs> Only all of your life, sweetie. <laughs> your brain matter is supposed to be gray. Now close up your cranium and come to bed. <laughs> all right, dear. Oh, I'm so lucky to have you. I totally agree. Ha, 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 ha. If the top of your head is cushy and gray, hair color is not your problem. Dear, you've got a little gravy on your blouse from dinner. Oh, honey, that's not gravy. That's part of my frontal lobe. <laughs> Just for morons. From Frigamall Industries. Ask for it by name. <laughs> what the? Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. we have a topic today, Kostak? We do. The topic today, uh, sort of dovetailing the uh, Super Bowl, it's uh, company slogans. Okay. And a bunch of them are beer slogans. They seem to be uh, <laughs> handy for joke writing the beer slogans. Uh, Sam Adams, their slogan is always a good decision.
Really? Beer is always a good decision? Wait a minute. I can say no. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes it is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this might be my favorite slogan ever. Uh, it's such a beer guy slogan. Carlsberg, probably the best lager in the world. Only a beer slogan could start with the word probably. Like, we don't even know. Who cares? It's got to be top 100, right? Have a beer already. That is a very fine beer, though. I must that say. is a good beer. Probably the finest. But think about it. No other company could get away with that. Like, you can't have Delta. We'll probably get you there. <laughs> 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 yeah. We don't know. Also with us, Christine Stedman. Now, you're a mom? Well, a mom and a grandma. I think you know that. I know. She's, I'm a grandpa. So this is how this Are works. You? Yep. She's uh, been married 27 years and still a virgin time. Uh, yes. Well, you know, I have a, I have a lot of grandkids. My daughter keeps having babies, has one almost every year. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, she called me the other day. She goes, Mom, guess what? I'm pregnant again. There must be something in the air. I'm like, yeah, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Hello? <laughs> Bang! Hey, hello? Sing! <laughs> I'm getting her fixed. <laughs> Hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Well, what else would you be doing with your time? I'm Tom and John Fedro. <laughs> <laughs> this time it was him, not me. Yeah. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. I blame myself. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, In the performance room, there's Josh Arnold. Hi. At the I Hate Stephen Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. There's Willie Griswold. Having time in my life. Yep. I'm uh, Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Uh, Chick had a little medical exam yesterday. Everything is okay. Well, I'm waiting for results, but uh, they didn't stop everything and go, holy hell, what's that? You may be waiting for results, but I know everything's okay. Yeah, yeah me too. My heart, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, good. But uh, very important to get those medical tests, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Uh, a whole variety of them out there. You know what I'm talking about. That's right. Uh, and brush your teeth. Uh, well, no, yeah, that's got some important to Eat probably. vegetables, say your prayers. Oh, yep. All good, all good things. All good things. Uh, we're covering Great all advice. The bases. Be grateful for one thing. Straight exercise yeah. every day. Yeah, don't build nice. a guillotine at your house and cut off your head. Uh, I just read that story. I couldn't wait. Funny, huh? Not <laughs> funny? Shut it up. Not really what I was thinking. Uh, um, kind of sad. I don't know, sad. At some point, people deserve what they get. It sounds uh, ill-conceived to me. Oh, so no, at, no, no. They so thought one this point, out. one of them had to cut their head off while looking at the other's head. I think head. it was a double deal. Yeah, I think it, it sounds like it was a duel at yes. the same time. What? Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Should we just go ahead and do the story? No, no, no. no. Okay. Didn't they use the guillotine in like the 80s? Yes. Well, it was something like that. It where was crazy. It was reason. used way later than you yeah. think. Right. I think the last <laughs> French public execution was in 1976, <laughs> which means that morning you could have been listening to Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And then watch someone get their head chopped off in public by the state. Crazy. Uh, uh, public beheading. Do you remember, uh, was it? <laughs> Let's see. It was just a couple days ago was the anniversary of Bundy getting the juice? Oh, really? Yeah. We had a barbecue that. We day. had a barbecue that morning. <laughs> That's a weird. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, we did. We, 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 did on you, the porch here, we had a barbecue. Yeah, we did. That's a weird theme desk calendar you have. Uh, yeah. No, I, it was. It was in today in history. Oh, and I, I, dude, I, I chose not to read it. You know, there's a serial killer slash true crime Abs desk calendar. Absolutely. It's so huge right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really <laughs> unpleasant. Well, um, well okay. Um, now, we've got a couple interesting things coming up um, in, in the world of news and the world of sports. Um, and Actually, first, in the world of Christie. What? Uh, just uh, an observation from Justin. Hi, Justin. Uh, Christie has stated, brushing teeth in shower, vile. Blowing nose in shower, the hank, vile. Yep. Urinating in shower, A-OK, -okay, I do it every day. I do. I do it every time I shower. Well, that goes that, straight into the drain. Yeah, that it's is the like least gross deal. of those things. Right? Brushing Absolutely. your teeth, vile. <laughs> I didn't say it was vile. <laughs> Tell me Shoot that. his thought out your nose, vile. Tell vile. You, you wash your legs after that, though, right? It you doesn't see. get on my legs. It goes down the drain. What? You know, what do you, you think? Does I it hit the wall? Like this? Oh, Was stance. it hit the wall? No. That's Where money down go? the drain, Chris. You could be jarring that up. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> you just piss the money away. None of, none of this is Sniper. helping. Uh, well, <laughs> hey, let me tell you, I got Christie's piss over here in this jar. Oh, I got the lead pee. <laughs> I drink too much water. It looks just I'm like water. I hate I'm to not kidding. Look at it. Look at it. It's clear. Uh, it's clear. 
What else you got over there? NHL playoffs last night. Florida beat Boston, believe it or not, 6-3. And uh, Boston has always come back and won the next game so far this season. They set a record, yada, yada. Dallas over Minnesota, <laughs> 7-3. Edmonton beat the Kings, 4-2. And Carolina, the Hurricanes over the Isles in overtime, 4-3. Tiger Woods is recovering from another surgery he posted on his Twitter that he had fusion surgery. Of course, Jeff Lorber was there. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's a, yeah, um, his, one second. There was a the fine band, Jeff Lorber Fusion. I don't know. If it's oh. somewhat, somewhat obscure. I don't know if it's a fine <laughs> Somewhat band. Well, well, yeah, very good. I, I, want, I want to say hello to the three people who got that. That's they have a obscure. modest hit? That was, no. The guy's a great player. But did he have a uh -huh. modest hit? No, not even that. I don't, did right. they have any hits, <laughs> no. per se? I mean, How the hell do you guys know about them? I don't know about them. I've never heard of the guy. <laughs> They're weird. <laughs> being, in a, yeah. being in a radio station forever, you know? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, anyway, uh, most estimates on recovery for this uh, uh, ankle fusion, uh, <laughs> 8 to 12 weeks. <laughs> that would put into doubt, of course, whether he plays in three remaining majors. Woods had a noticeable limp when he played in the Masters. Yeah, this is Jeff Lorber. Who's that? What? He's got a high voice. They sang. <laughs> no. There's no way. This is uh, Jeff Lorber, the facts of love. Really? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like Prince. Or I was going to say it sounded like yeah. I'd heard it, but of yeah. course I, I mean, that's every that sounds like 80s sure. movie montage. Yeah, you just walked yeah. into the mall. Yeah, know, yeah. There you go. There you go. That's Rain dance. More. That's more jazzy. Recognize this one? No, I'll let me get to the middle of it. It's garbage. <laughs> no, it's kind of cool. That guy is working that triangle. Got a smooth jazz. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's a triangle. triangle. Get it out of here. <laughs> a trumpet has no place, with the exception of Chicago. A trumpet has no place in popular music. I said it, and I'm dying on that hill. <laughs> Really? He said it. Yep. What about some of the great ska bands? Nope. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, your Mighty Mighty Boss oh, Tones. Your them. The Pass. Urge. Sly and the Family Stone. Pass. The new Charlie Crocker. I can't really imagine Chick wearing a checkered shirt, skanking <laughs> next to a trombone. <laughs> what player. about uh, Chuck Mangione? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck Mangione. That he rocks. <laughs> Sang. <laughs> Feels so good. <laughs> Certainly a catchy tune. <laughs> Great song. Everybody knew it. Didn't he carry his trumpet around all the time? Isn't that the legend? <laughs> There's a story about him playing Bob, yeah. Bob, yeah, Bob, Bob ran. Bob <laughs> swears by that story. Bob yeah. was in an airport. Yep. And Chuck Mangione was sitting at one of the tables at the bar wearing that famous hat that he wore and a Chuck Mangione leather jacket. <laughs> Amazing. And, no, it gets better. And perhaps if we hadn't, if if you didn't notice it was Chuck Mangione without the hat, he made sure that he put the hat on. Yeah. But no, but he got up and he, out of nowhere, he just started playing the... Trumpet. Seriously. A gift for the people. How cool is that? <laughs> Here's my hit, ladies and gentlemen. Cool, huh? Yeah, That's what you think? It's a great song. I bet people clapped. <laughs> See, oh, now this course. also uh, raises another irritating subject. Uh, that's This is not a song. It's an instrumental. Wasn't it a, was it Nadia's theme? Was that... An instrumental can be a, every, a, uh, an instrumental is a song. No. Stop. You're saying song has to have lyrics? Yep. And a vocalist. I think this technically that's not true. I think, I think, uh, uh, I think that your, song has lyrics. Song is words your, music. And it does have lyrics. Etymology. Oh, what? it feels so good. I'm so drunk. Oh, yes, it does. At the airport bar. It, it feels, feels so good. good. Oh, yes, it does. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I could read them to you if you So like. were there like two versions where they had a lyric version and a... Must. I have never heard the one with lyrics. Go ahead. Jump in, Chrissy. I can't sing. You know it, that. It sounds like... I see like the lyrics? It sounds like the intro music for a dating show sponsored by cigarettes. It's got a very... Tom, would you start it over? Start it over. Go ahead. There's no place for me to hide <laughs> the thought of all... What? What? You all did what? You did what? You what? You what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? The thought? Balling all the time. <laughs> what was that thing about... Because I need it to hear. I can see why the instrumental is the <laughs> Well, they wouldn't have me sing it. Wait, what does he need to hear? I'm, I'm lost. That's something special. Oh. oh, no, that's special something. Sorry. Oh, just heartbreaking. 
Yeah, there's no place for me to hide the thoughts of all the time I cried and felt this pain that I have known because I needed just to hear that's something special. Vague and meaningless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then one day you just appear, yeah. you said hello. Then Let's make love day along day the way. You, you just, just appear. appear. <laughs> Oh, it's the with, man. You said hello. With a subpoena. It's, it's the lazy men's choir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Let's make love along the way. Your name is music to my heart. I'll hey, always a, really love you. There's a phone ringing, Tom. Do you hear that every now and then? Yeah. Hello, Bob and Tom show. Yo, bro. Hey, man. Hey. It's Kyle, man. Hey, Happy Kyle. 420. Hey, 420, dude. Oh. What's up, dude? Yo, put me down for two jars of that Lee P. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle. Oh, boy. I just wanted to call and wish you and Willie a happy 420. As you guys know, this is the holiest of holidays for us stoners. Yeah. I made some special brownies just for today. Cool. Oh, boy. Except for I got a little too high before, so I forgot to put the weed in them. <laughs> so, uh, they're, but they're delicious. I'm just sitting here enjoying it. <laughs> cup of coffee, smoking a bow. Nice, man. <laughs> or as the people call it, the poor man's speedball. I got all my DVDs ready. I got my Pineapple Express. Yeah. I got some Up and Smoke. <laughs> and the Colt Stoner classic, The Wizard of Oz, man. Yeah. Oh, that line is a trip. Yeah. Before I forget, my bad baloney ponies playing tonight over at Dave's house for a special 420 show. Oh. So if you're free, I'll go ahead and put you all on the list. Free of charge, man. I got some edibles. I got some concentrate. If you've never done concentrate, a little warning. It's just like Brill Cream, man. A little dabble do ya. Oh, nice. Last week, my buddy Dave gave me a marijuana suppository. Ooh. Yeah, put my ass to sleep, man. Yeah. <laughs> See, Ace, I got jokes too, man. <laughs> I'm super excited. I got some new marijuana lube and the April 07 edition of High Times. <laughs> oh, man. April Center is gorgy, man. Tons of purple and orange hairs. You can see the turfs just a glistening. Oh, man. Oh, dude, I totally forgot I got to work today. Uh, hey, Willie, we yeah. should both call in sick and just blaze it all day, man. What yeah, do you think? man. Oh, real quick. Hey, to all you stoners out there, if you if you get high today, man, don't drive. That's not cool, man. Just call a Duber. Right on, man. <laughs> oh. Happy 420, everybody. Okay, dude. Thank you, Kyle. You too. Oh, uh, yeah. 420. We got a couple 420, uh, 420 tributes on the way. And world records <laughs> coming up. All right. Uh, right now, I want to talk about Mother's Day. How close are we, Christy? It's May 14th, so a couple weeks. Yeah, and uh, Steven, weeks, Steven yeah. Singer Jewelers can take care of you for Mother's Day. You got all those moms out there? Get them something nice. One of the great options from Steven Singer Jewelers is the beautiful brand new neon green 24 karat gold dipped rose. Real rose dipped in real 24 karat gold augmented with these beautiful highlights in neon green. This is the first of the brand new neon color series coming from Steven Singer. They're collectible and they start at about $59. And of course, Steven Singer ships for free. That comes with a premium gift box with a personalized Mother's Day card from you. Check it out at Steven Singer. Well, you go to IHateStevenSinger.com. And uh, let me see here. What did I want to mention? Oh, bracelets, of course. They got those. Necklaces, earrings, great stuff for those moms in your life. And all Steven Singer stuff has that full-time guarantee. Go to IHateStevenSinger.com. Do something for that great mom of yours and all those other moms in your life. IHateStevenSinger.com. Tell them the Bob and Tom Show sent you. I hate stevensinger.com is the place you can review what's going on. By the way, get the orders in before 2 o'clock today and they go out the door today. You'll have them in plenty of time. Uh, coming up, we've got more stuff in sports including a world record and we've got um, uh, Al Jackson coming up with some um, verbal play and uh, interesting stuff coming out of the world of dogs and um, beheading. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom 24-7. It's not on air. It's online. Bob and
normally I will I will sing in my stand up act if I'm talking about a particular band thing. Like right now, I have you know I I kind of talk about the fact that uh, you know Grunt uh, STP is getting back together. You know Scott Weiland. Yeah, for sure. So I kind of do a, a mild dancing impersonation of him to prove that you know you could you have to be on heroin to dance like that. And and mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and the fact that he's actually our generation's Keith Richards. If you've noticed, yeah, he nothing true. will kill him. He's getting yeah. been kicked out of two bands because they thought he was going to die, and then yeah. he didn't die. Right. He didn't die. He's still alive. I hear him. I hear him. And they're like, dang, hey, whatever. Let's record another album. Who cares? Um, I like their music. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we can all agree that uh, that grunge is the one good thing that AIDS gave us. Mm. I think you can pretty much argue that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to be really, nothing explains the biggest left turn in the history of music like AIDS. <laughs> because it literally was like one week we were like, don't want nothing but a good time. AIDS, I seem to recognize <laughs> AIDS. <laughs> 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 right, exactly. <laughs> Pour some oh. sugar on me. AIDS, me. <laughs> you tell a generation of 13 year olds that sex equals death, you're going to have them going, I deny him. <laughs> that forecast fallen flat the opposite seems to be happening amazon and apple are sprinting into your local theaters taking a distinctly different approach than netflix launched on 3500 plus screens ben affleck's air was the biggest release ever by a streamer and that's just a start amazon studios plans to release 12 to 15 movies theatrically every year and apple is set to spend 1 billion on movies that will land in cinemas before streaming and that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. TikTok users are now trying to make a so-called healthy ice cream using cottage cheese. Ice cream is so perfect. Why mess with it? Drew, do you like cottage cheese? I did prior to. <laughs> <laughs> I so liked no. it like two minutes ago. Do you uh, you like the pineapple in the cottage cheese? Maybe a pineapple ring? How no. about salt and pepper? Huh? Salt and pepper. <laughs> what do you guys put in your cottage cheese? <laughs> Answer me! <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm glad he's back. Are you? Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Comedy, guess, Bob and Tom exclusives. And it's here on the internet. Bob and Tom 24-7. When your horse says run, it's very last race, and there's nothing left to do. Giddy up, giddy up. We don't think it's very good taste to turn him into glue. Giddy up, giddy so if up. your horse has lost his stuff and his legs aren't thin and bone, giddy up, giddy and up. if his meat ain't very tough, then he comes to Burger Pony. Now, when you come into any participating Burger Pony restaurant and order our swale in a pail, every kid in your group will receive a free hot fudge Sunday silence. And don't forget our Clint Eastwood <laughs> Western spaghetti. <laughs> And our delicious burgers, including the Daily Double and the Triple Crown. <laughs> and remember our motto, if we're not in your neighborhood yet, your neighbors have probably passed a petition. <laughs> <laughs> so if your horse has lost his stuff and his legs aren't thin and bony, and if his meat ain't very tough, then he comes to Burger Pony. Comes to Burger Pony. Comes to Burger Pony. Hi, fellas. This is Floyd Tucker, the over-the-road trucker. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7, of course. The Bob and Tom Show presents Memorable Moments in Presidential History. American presidents <laughs> have been immortalized in different ways. Washington had our nation's capital and an entire state named after him. Lincoln appears on the $5 bill as well as the penny. The first President Bush has an airport named after him. Hmm? 
Perhaps when it comes to being remembered, no president was more royally screwed than James A. Garfield. All he got was a stupid cartoon cat. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Bob and Tom's memorable moments in presidential history. There you go. Hey, man, it's Donnie Biker. Hey, Donnie. Hey, I heard you guys talking about that man with 13 inches of pork. Yeah, yeah. 13 and a half. It's crazy. You guys know Jamie Vickers? You know drummer for Velvet Donger? No. No. <laughs> He was uncut, too, and he could hide just about anything. Really? Did that affect the taste, Donnie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Bosley. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's <laughs> Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, and don't go anywhere. Tom is uh, there. He's having a couple of technical difficulties, and uh, his brain is kind of checked out. So uh, this should be an interesting uh, set of... Uh, Profound lack of sleep and a computer crashing. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, we're okay. We're going to be fine. That's I, I don't believe you. Today, 420. We have a 420 tribute coming up in a matter of moments. Yeah, oh, man. Uh, we'll certainly look forward to that. But uh, right now, we return to the sports desk. Oh, you know what time it is. What time is it? Stupid World Record. Chocolate company, Russell Stover. Mm. Let's just all take that in for a second. Mm. Chocolate. Celebrated their 100th anniversary by assembling the world's largest box of chocolates in Missouri. Oh, yeah? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's there's a big old factory there. Kansas City-based company created an oversized version of its classic copper box at the Kaufman Center for the performing arts and filled it with massive chocolates wow each of the chocolates weighing between 11 and 38 pounds like any box of chocolates there was a small bite taken out of each one mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i probably shouldn't mention another brand of candy but don't they have a menu on the lid now where you yeah they typically them? have a map yeah. very helpful very remember when you were a kid and that would arrive your mom would have you Bite into one, and it would just be some putrid, awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is pink. <laughs> doesn't uh, oh, like raspberry or something. Gaffer can have that bit where oh, who put toothpaste? Yeah, in this? yeah. exactly. <laughs> they put every single kind of nut into one little chocolate. Oh God! This uh, box of candy measures thirty feet, four and a half inches wide, and fifteen feet five inches tall. Man, that's taller than a basketball rim. <sighs> the finished box of chocolates weighed. 5,616 pounds. Oh, yeah. Mom always said life is like a box of chocolate. Drop that one on you, it'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. 5,000 pounds. Mama was insane. <laughs> uh, oh, there's the phone. Hello, Bob and Tom Show. Uh, hey, fellas. Hey, Floyd. Floyd. I have enjoyed your box of chocolates program. Oh, nice. <laughs> Boy, that's... Nothing but wholesome goodness in every Whitlam sampler I've ever tried. <laughs> You know the old saying that April showers bring May flowers? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what else they bring? What? About $10,000 in hail damage. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. At least according to the insurance company, you know, but they say always get three estimates, but hell, we can barely afford this one, let alone twice more. <laughs> you, run the, you run your hand over the hood of my little pickup truck, you'd think you was on cobblestone. <laughs> oh. You got so many dings in it, Kelly looks like the back of Big D's thighs, and you know it's <laughs> always worse if she sits on her wicker chair in short pants. <laughs> I hate that. Mr. Ace, make sure you're paying attention, son, or you'll miss this one. <laughs> Old boys at the way station tried this one on me yesterday. You know why people in Athens uh, rarely get up before sunrise? No. Because Dawn is tough on Greece. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I reckon we would do for a clean joke. <laughs> oh, for sure. That's why I turned into your program, regular. Where else can you hear jokes about dishwashing fluid? Yeah. <laughs> I reckon it's just by way of bringing joy to people. Uh, <laughs> Floyd. <laughs> Boy, 
it won't be long till these cicadas are back out making the ruckus. Oh, yeah, they're loud. Wake up they? and listen to you. <laughs> okay, sure. A lot of times in the evening. Is that a noise. cicada year this year? I hope not. I don't think so. Well, well maybe not one of the big, but uh, they're out there. Yeah. They'll yeah, be they're, out there. They're larva now, right there. Yeah, yeah, isn't it every 17 years? I forgot. The big ones are. Yeah, many, many. Okay, okay, very good. Some Cicadas. of them are late. And they don't. Oh. Now, you, th this is a, this isn't a world record. It's just a sports story. Is this what you're doing now? Hmm. A Scottish ultra marathon runner has been disqualified from a race for using a car during part of the course. <laughs> you don't think that's funny? <laughs> well, there was a street there. What was he supposed to do? <laughs> Mr. Josiah Zach Razuski is accused of traveling two and a half miles in a car during the. Uh, Great Britain Ultras Manchester to Liverpool race. Now, in yeah. the man's defense, cars often drive faster than people can run. Right. Yes. <laughs> and so, he gets to sit down. Yes. Yeah. Far less tiring. Right. You, you want to exactly. win or not? Right. It's a she. Yeah, she it's a wants woman. A, it's oh, a lady. She? Oh, what's her name? Josiah? Oh, okay. Oh, I assumed a man. I did too. Sorry. The 47-year-old doctor told the BBC her leg began to hurt, oh, really, uh -huh. near the halfway point of the 50-mile race. After seeing a friend next to the course, she accepted a ride to the next checkpoint <laughs> to tell marshals, she said, she was dropping out. Oh, okay. She so said she wasn't she, trying to cheat. She well. agreed to carry on in a non-competitive way after the marshals told her, you will hate yourself if you stop. Well, good for her. She apologized, saying that she was an idiot for accepting a medal and a trophy for third place. Oh, wait, so what? Is, so it all, this all came out after wait, the fact? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this she does, she does part of the race in a car. story I've heard in my life. So the marshals told her to race non-competitively, <laughs> but they went ahead and gave her a medal. No, and she accepted it. That's the problem. But, but, I, I still, I, but how did she get a third place medal? Yeah. The, yeah, either that was all out of order. That's non-competitively. Or... No, no. She's running the race. Okay. She doesn't feel great. She hails a friend of hers in a car, gets driven to the next checkpoint. To say, I'm quitting. To say, I'm quitting. And they go, oh, you don't want to quit. So she goes, okay. And she keeps running. But remember, she's just done the last part of the race in a car. Were the, so the marshals were not, they didn't know that they she had arrived there in a car. Had done that? Apparently, when she, see, there are checkpoints. So I assume the marshals could be 30 miles apart for all I know. Yeah, but I thought, so if she drove up to the marshals, so she must have drove. <laughs> All right, well, there was a story. Yeah, yeah, sure was. A lot of words in that story, I'll tell you that. I'm just saying. I think it's pretty incredible, though, that she got driven in a car for 2.1 miles and, and two people still beat her? Yeah, third yeah. place. Good That's point. pretty incredible, man. Good for them. That is a good point, Willie. <laughs> I, I can clear it up for you. Right. Oh, yeah, please. I wish yeah. you would. When I go out, she's Scottish, by the way. Oh, when yeah. I go out, <laughs> well, you know I want to run, be number one, and be number two. My legs gave out, and I saw a friend ahead waving to me from his Subaru. <laughs> so I got in. I got in. Even though it wasn't right, drove to the checkpoint and started up again. No one saw me. No one saw me. So I figured, what the hell, I'll run this thing now to the very end. So I will drive 2.5 miles Cause I fell apart in mile 24 Just to be <laughs> the woman who comes in third My morals are weak My legs are sore I'm a cheater She's a cheater <laughs> I'm a cheater She's a cheater <laughs> la, 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 That should uh, straighten up uh, the story <laughs> 50 miles she had to run? That's a, yeah. that's a long marathon A long time Oof. But still it's almost twice, America. That's a lot she, of nipple tape. Uh, took, a, took a ride, you see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at some yeah, point. It's confusing story, but she probably should have turned down the medal. Yes. She did do part of it. Part of it in an auto. What about the poor person who finished fourth? Yeah. Well, I'm sure they gave her the medal. Yeah, Dave, I believe. They, moved they, her up. They've, they've, they've sorted it out. Are we just uh, looking for the good in this woman? Is yeah. That right? We're giving her the benefit of the doubt. No, 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 no. You think the woman that and, came in fourth? In fourth place gets the third place medal, right? Right. Yes. Okay, if you say so. Stupid world record. Why wouldn't she? Never. Because she won it. They gave it to her. David Rush. Uh, He's back. Broke the Guinness World Record for the fastest time to transfer a 20-pound dumbbell between his hands a hundred times. Hmm. Boy, that must have been tiring after a while. David That's managed to smash the previous record of 24.16 seconds. With a final time of 15.88 seconds. A hundred times? A hundred times so transferred between his hands. He's just kind of juggling it? Yeah, but it's always got to be 
it can't be touching a finger all the time. <laughs> so, you see what I'm saying? This is very technical. So it's like doing what I'm doing right now, but with a 20-pound yes. weight. He's yeah. just bringing it Oh, your forearms have got to be dying. And he did it 100 times. In 15, 15 seconds. There's, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. No. There's I don't, a video. I don't, I don't believe it either. I don't believe that. I say David Rush, a and I'm surprised weight? no one has said this before. He's full of crap. No. Okay. There's a, he's got, he always has to wear the video thing in his head, and he's got... 15 seconds? Yeah. He's, the guy's a master juggler. Of course he does it. <laughs> and was and the, that's I mean twenty pounds that is hard. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I have to do it every time I urinate. Oh yeah, yeah. but you're not you're not yeah. switching yeah. hands. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I, try, I tend to go you know, <laughs> dive with the right and flop to the left. Oh and you know what? And that's just <laughs> I, that's just my balls. <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> anyway, David said the uh, the last time he attempted the record, he used a kettle bell. Hmm. He said Guinness was not thrilled that I was patting the handle back and forth. Versus fully gripping it. Yeah, I think so. This time, he used a dumbbell, and I held it up underneath each time I grabbed it. Hmm. I don't know what that means. I, I have to see the video on this. I don't understand. You, you, you can, surely you can understand our skepticism. Right. Even though there is a video. Last couple yeah. stories I had nothing to do with. I'm merely the messenger. Okay. Was it 100 times in 15 seconds? Using piece of crap. So Switching hands with a 20-pound dumbbell. It's Again, transferring at least four times per second that, then? That it math. simply doesn't work. No. He's a master juggler. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> David, I'm on your side. You know what? I'm sorry. I missed the part that he, he's a master juggler. I, right. I I love the ones where he's juggling and doing crazy stuff simultaneously. You know, running yeah. a mile, and I love those are the ones I think are pretty funny. Yeah, some of them are, are fairly dumb. Didn't he uh, uh, juggle eggs or something? And, I mean, he's done he's it all. Eggs. He's, he's We've uh, been windbagged here, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Earlier, we were talking about the great Chuck Mangione, who um, is famous for oh. such songs as uh, "Feel So Good," "Feel So Good," and uh, his other hits, yeah, and "Feel up So by Good Part Two. <laughs> yes, like we yes. did last summer. <laughs> uh, dear musical illiterates, says Michael. Oh, you're giving this air, huh? Okay. Chuck Mangione did not play the trumpet. Yeah. He played the flugelhorn. Oh yeah. man! And before you speculate, I have yet to find a situation where this bit of trivia will get one laid. <laughs> <laughs> But this will get you laid. Hey, come on in here, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would you like a nice... What's good? How are you living? Yeah. If you're in a bar and there's at least three dudes wearing fedoras, that piece of <laughs> trivia might get you laid. You might be <laughs> maybe, in the right maybe. environment. It's a oh. great song. Tom, do you know the difference between a trumpet and a flugelhorn? I forget. Isn't the, flug isn't the flugelhorn a little bit bigger? I Maybe. believe the horn has a wider opening. The flugel horn was invented by Emil Flugel. Okay. In uh, the uh, uh, late 1800s. And the, I know the cornet is made out of paper towels. Right. Right. And Rosemary Clooney <laughs> sings about very that. Silly. <laughs> that, that okay. When you buy coronet. Oh, Christy has something. Well, I was going to explain this David Rush thing a little bit. It's not like he's going like this, hand to hand. Switching it back and forth? Yeah. He's bent over, and the dumbbell is like this in front Between of him. Between his legs? Yes. And he's going back and forth with his arms. But it's still in the mid, it's in midair every... Yeah. You know why it's in midair, Christy? Why? He's a master juggler. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's see Hollywood Hannon do with that. That's right. Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a little uh, uh, illumination on the cornet. Extra value is what you get. You buy cornet. For my big family, I buy cornet. Why aren't there horns in this? Cornet towels give Yeah, I thought cornet blue. <sighs> Cornet oh, Josh! Uh, and pretty if I were a billionaire, I would buy the rights to the obscure TV show called Coronet Blue and make it a movie <laughs> with huge stars in it. <laughs> it's a famous TV show that went off the yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, coming up in sports. Wasn't Frank Converse in Coronet yeah, Blue? I think so. Yeah. The shoe you know, Oh, here we go. Yeah. We got the... Uh, that's the... Uh, Dean, I don't want to... That's the old video. Yeah, that's, that's the, the kettlebell. first time. Yeah. The second time he uses an actual dumbbell. He got static from Guinness for using... The more we talk about this, the more credence we're giving it, and I'm against that. <laughs> I can't play the video. The man is a master like, juggler. What's wrong with you? 
<laughs> do you see? You see? And he's got uh, gloves on. When he's right, yeah. he's right. Okay. Um, uh, coming up. In I don't. I don't know if we have any sports or not. I might. I might leave again. <laughs> <laughs> You'd rather be in the MRI I'd machine. I'd rather be in the MRI machine. <laughs> well, it, it's 4:20. Perhaps it's time for a 4:20 tribute. Can I read a letter before that tribute? Oh, I always heard that his herb was top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I just could not wait to find out for myself. <laughs> don't knock it till you've tried it. Well, I've tried it, my friend. And I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. <laughs> I learned a hard lesson in a small Texas town. He fired up a fat boy and he passed him around. <laughs> the last words I spoke before they tucked me in. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. My party's all over before it began. You can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend. But I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. I hopped on his old bus, the honeysuckle road. The party was Vegas, it was after the show. Alone in the front lounge, just me and him. With one parting puff, Grim Creeper sat in. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. My party's all over before it began. You can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend. But I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. Now we're passing the guitar, telling good jokes. I know one's a coming, cause I'm smelling smoke. <laughs> no, I do not partake, I just let it pass by. With a smile on my face and a great contact high. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed, will it? Again. You can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend, but I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. In the fetal position, <laughs> with drool on my chin, <laughs> I messed up and smoke weed with Willie again. <laughs> Toby Keith and Scotty Emmerich in our studios doing a little 420 tribute, smoking weed with Willie. We're coming right back. It's the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules, or just scroll down to the bottom of the page and see contest rules. This is the Bob and Tom Show. How I do get sentimental About me carefree days as a lad We never had toys that were store-bought We would improvise with things that we had We made forts out of cardboard boxes Yardsticks were swords or were spears But of all these things none Gave the hours of fun like me mother's gigantic brazier. <laughs> oh, me mother's, oh, me mother's, me mother's gigantic brazier. It was of the finest label, canvas, lace, and stainless cable. Me mother's gigantic brazier. Yeah! <laughs> oh, I leapt from the roof of the garage, though I was but six or seven years. Oh, I would have broke me back, but I clung fast, fast to the straps of me mother's gigantic brazier. <laughs> oh, me mother's, oh, me mother's, me mother's gigantic brazier. Wing nuts, cleats, and spoiler, brass grommets, and cup holder on me mother's gigantic brazier. <laughs> 
We tied the bra between two trees. <laughs> the neighbor boys, they wore, they did declare. <laughs> we ended the attack with six pu- pumpkins and two cats <laughs> flung from me mother's gigantic <laughs> brassiere. <laughs> oh, me mother's, oh, me mother's, <laughs> me mother's gigantic brassiere. Delicate flower appliques, eight track tape and safety chains on me mother's gigantic brazier. <laughs> One time we used it to slow down our dragster <laughs> or parasail behind our boat. Then there was the time it was used to airlift an injured skier. <laughs> Off a treacherous mountain slope. <laughs> but most I think of my father's pride when wash day it was done. As he hoisted it up the telephone pole <laughs> to billow in the sun. <laughs> Call me mothers! Call me mothers! Me mother's gigantic brazier. With an awning and screen door, could sleep two family of four. It's me mother's gigantic brazier. Oh, me mother's, oh, me mother's, me mother's gigantic brazier. Reinforced hydraulic winch, reflective tape, and three point hitch on me mother's gigantic brazier. If you don't drink fine, you know, have no duels, but, you know, don't do funnels. (laughs) 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 What, are you going to brag to your friends the next day? Oh, dude, uh, you should have been there. I mean, we were pounding that keg till four in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) I was so bloated. (laughs) 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 Uh, Then I drove everyone home. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. There's Man. a gigantic warehouse of stuff I don't get, I can't and they understand. serve non-alcoholic beer there. Yeah. You know what? I, Boy, another I don't thing I don't that. understand: Hooters has food to go. <laughs> 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 Who the hell's that for? <laughs> Hi, this is Bobcat Goldthwait, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24/7. I'm on it's Donnie bike. Hey, hey Donnie. Donnie. How are you guys talking about strip clubs and stuff? That's well, a crazy story. Big, uh, big story. Yeah, a stripper in Indiana was actually awarded workman's comp for uh, apparently getting injured on the job. That ain't nothing. I went to a strip club once, man. This stripper passed out, I think, from exhaustion. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I swear to God, it took him eight songs to revive her. And stuff. Wow. She's doing good now. <laughs> Strippers are getting desperate nowadays. Man. Why do you say that? Well, I knew one stripper, Bob, who'd even accept subway cards if they had at least three stamps on them. <laughs> <laughs> These are hard times. Yeah. Uh-huh. Recession almost. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. My Uncle Sonny used to trade free oil changes for lap dance. <laughs> no kidding. But that died when his favorite dancer got a car repoed. No. And a lot of them take the bus anyways. You know Scotty Winkler? No. He has a great story about going to this strip club and hearing the DJ say, Now, welcome to the stage, tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that was a nice, man. He got a fight or not. You can look it up. He said, man, she only used the pole to prop up her crutches. So I don't know if she was good or not. Never used crutches. No? I just boss once who walked around the hallways on a single crutch. Uh-huh. Big puss. I said it right to his face. <laughs> he said his copay wouldn't cover both crutches. So I sold him one of my putters. They work better anyway. <laughs> When I had Tommy John surgery on both knees, I used a putter and a fan wedge. <laughs> I got to go. I don't think Tommy you get John the Tommy surgery John surgery on, on your knees. Yeah. I think yeah. Comedian Greg Fitzsimmons has joined us in the studio. You're a New Yorker. Uh, yeah. How's that going? New York's good. Not bad. It's, uh, it's a strange place because no matter where you work or what you do, you come in contact with freaks. <laughs> 
You know, I, like I, I grew up, I worked at a gas station for a couple of years, and the guy I worked with, strange man, former porno movie star from the 70s. Really? Yeah, he'd get confused every time he'd fill the tank. Halfway through, he'd pull it out and spray it all over the car. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, we lost a lot of good petrol. Uh, you don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We yeah. can't go anymore. <laughs> Holy That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. And Gunner's got tickets today. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. At the news desk, it's Christy Lee. Hey. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Chick. At the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hello. There's Willie Griswold. Hanging out with the big dog. Uh, he'll, have a, <laughs> he'll have a letter in a moment. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. Hello, Tom. Thank you very much. Coming up, that Ace Cosby joke of the day, of course. And uh, also, we'll talk with... Al Jackson from the Daily Blast Live. Al, our uh, expert on uh, language of the street. I'm not sure what year it was on the street, but we're going we're gonna to find out. And Willie, so you had a letter regarding uh, Willie. Yeah, Brian wrote in saying, Dear Bob and Tom Show, Willie, I think you should know about a fun game I like to play. Every time you play I'll Never Smoke Weed with Willie again, I see if I can cut my weed up, roll it up, and get it lit by the end of the song. I usually win. Hmm. Enjoy 420. Thank you, Brian. I love ah. games like that. Do you have do you have things you do that based on a certain element of time? No. You, um, you reward yourself. It's less cool, but when I do my exercise bike, I click start, and there's about a minute warm up where a pretty lady just like encourages you. Mm -hmm. And in that time, I try to put my little shoes on and click in and make sure that I'm ready to go in that first minute. I like yeah. to put a put a clock on it. Hmm. Now, um, at the uh, recording studio, we have a uh, an alarm. And um, the alarm is a timed alarm so that you can uh, set the alarm. Then you have a certain amount of time to get out before it calls the police. Now, Pat, do you want to tell your story? Well, oh, boy. <laughs> Gee, I can't imagine what happened. Yeah, me either. I had the thing memorized, and uh, I thought it was 90 seconds. And it was, I think it's three minutes or something like that. So I uh, came in. I would always rush in, and one time I didn't. Uh, I screwed up totally, and the cops had to come. But every time I was doing it, I thought it was like 90 seconds. Uh, you what thought is it was three no, minutes no, or no, four no. minutes? You thought it was nine seconds. Nine seconds. And you would frantically yeah, every time. hit the button and <laughs> frantically go the, down doodle. the hallway, down the two doors, and try to get the door shut before it would go off. Exactly. And it, it's 90 seconds, not nine. Uh, but uh, let's, uh, let's just move forward here. Uh, windbag for me. This is based on a dumb joke that I just did. Mm -hmm. It all started with Chuck Mangione, and we were talking about him pulling out his trumpet. Mm -hmm. We were correct. It's a flugelhorn. Yes. And then, flugel. Yes. And then I said, and you asked what the difference was, and the gays pointed out was something about the size of the bell, whatever. Big bell is uh, yeah, curling. There may be more to it. but um, And then I said, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the uh, cornet is made out of paper towels. Uh, of course. You is what you get when you buy cornet. Yeah, uh, uh, the coronet spelled differently than the coronet, the horn. Yeah, of course, yeah. Well, it's a stupid <laughs> joke, you see. <laughs> yes, but you that's know. what windbags are all about. Yes, but a coronet is not made out of really. That is what does. will windbags are all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, got this letter. Um, a Chick McGee had a medical procedure yesterday involved cleaning out the insides. Yes. Uh, uh, apparently, the laxative did not dislodge the stick that's been up Chick's ass. <laughs> I think Chick's I, been perfectly pleasant. Know, he goes, right. yesterday's show was far too friendly. I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say we're glad to have Chick and his blatant hostility back. <laughs> that he says, Give happy me that jackass's name. <laughs> it's, it's Greg. That he says, happy birthday. Or, I'm sorry, Happy Holiday, Wilbur. Okay, there we go. It's, uh, People say Happy Holidays, and they like to spell uh, days, D-A-Z-E. -E. Sure. And that is the ingenuity you get from my community, <laughs> my friends. That is what we contribute. Speaking of cannabis, a uh, cannabis company celebrating 420 with 420 pounds of chocolate. Zen Cannabis spent the last four months creating what it believes was the world's largest cannabis <laughs> chocolate bar, dubbed Big Zen, the bar weighs 420 pounds. Nice. Measures nine feet long, four inches wide, and three inches thick. Don't you order those at dinner all the time? Oh, no, that's a big Zen. <laughs> <laughs> the colossal candy bar, which is also infused with 4.2 million milligrams of THC. Wait, how much? 4.2 million milligrams of THC. Will that get you high, Willie? That'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to eat 
five four hundred and twenty pounds of chocolate. Okay, here's this thing is the size of a ping pong table, and wow. it costs forty two thousand dollars. So, so that's a hell of a party. Does it taste good? What, whoever buys it's going to have to what you just you're going to have to have a lot of friends over do shavings off of it. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Zachary, the company's CEO, said this is for serious buyers only. Uh, I can't believe it's for sale. No, I can't either. Couldn't you, as soon as you buy it, aren't you immediately arrested for dealing? <laughs> like, <laughs> isn't that over any... Yeah, maybe you'd ha you might have to be a licensed <laughs> dealer. Yeah. Right, right. Any, I don't care how good you are at talking. It'd be very hard to explain to a cop that's for personal use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the fact that it's on a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it literally is the size of a ping pong table. Man. That'd be fun to have it like a Coachella where it's just out, well, maybe in some uh, cold tent type thing. And oh, sure. People maybe, come up and just buy slices. Maybe like some sort of a uh, pop party at the X Games or something. Yeah. It's nice uh -huh. and chilly in Aspen. You can go over, get some into your Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to do this so bad. What is the, what is the brand? Zen. Z-E-N. Okay. And uh, is, is that a brand of a uh, of, of pot? The, like one of the uh, licensed brands. One they may have been involved in more, too. If, if the band Bush has taught us anything, it's that everything's Zen. Ah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, Zen. It looks like uh, Zen Leaf dispensaries. Uh, there's also a weed strain called Zen. Oh, so yeah. I'm not sure, but yeah, it could be some dispensary group. It could be just some company that produces marijuana products. Regardless, they're, they're heroes to <laughs> Willie and his ilk. I mean, these guys are doing the Lord's work, my friend. <laughs> And when I say the Lord, I mean Willie Nelson with a big beard. All right. The new Cumberland Borough Police Department in Pennsylvania encouraging a benign 420 day. They're offering not free candy bars with cannabis in it. They have special services to residents on a day recognized in cannabis culture. They're willing to check any product for free that residents want to bring to the station. Well, this is... Wait, uh, weed Turning yourself weed product? in. Yeah. For your troubles, you'll get a regular size bag of Doritos. It's a crime for them to possess, consume, grow, or sell marijuana in Pennsylvania. Oh. So they're trying to... I see. So they're going to arrest people. It's an they're amnesty, it's an amnesty day. Oh, it's an yeah. amnesty day. You get free bag of Doritos instead. Hmm. I don't now see you're you on eating, the list, I don't see you <laughs> eating uh, Doritos, Tom. You don't like Doritos? You like the classic Lay's potato chip. I do like a classic Lay's potato chip. Yeah. I can't even imagine you saying Cool Ranch or yeah. Nacho Cheese Doritos. Yeah. That's Police true. also said if someone wants to turn in their dealer, they'll give you a big family size bag of Doritos. What the hell? Yeah. How would you like to put you and your wow. family in danger? <laughs> what a big bag of Doritos. Good Lord. We got chips. <laughs> it's Narc Day in Pennsylvania. No hey, joke. My dealer is Fat Brian. Do I get the chips? <laughs> Eat them rats. before you're shot in the back of the head. <laughs> Enjoy those stitches. Nobody's going to do this. I think this is probably just to get a couple likes on social media, maybe Gosh. raise awareness. I mis I misunderstood when you said they were willing to check product. I yeah. thought it was like a good like where they would check it for other things besides weed. I think uh, it would be a nice. You. I don't program. think. I don't think they're arresting. Uh, Tom, I don't blame you for <laughs> being somewhat suspicious about uh, this. It, I mean, it says that it, it says that it's illegal in Pennsylvania. Yeah, but they're not going to give you a bag of Doritos and then arrest you. They do this with a lot of. They do this yeah. with uh, knives and guns and other right. uh, amnesty uh, uh, day. different places do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, mean, it's, I, I, I read like four different versions of this, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. In the places where, pot, just, where pot's legal, they have amnesty boxes right before TSA, so you can turn it in. And as soon as I fly into a state where weed is legal, I always go to that amnesty box, bring a little screwdriver, <laughs> get in there, get all the goods for free. But then it's empty, and you realize the TSA people have all taken it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have the finest weed. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, since they have those regulations on the amount of uh, fluid you can have in your toiletries, have you noticed how well-groomed the TSA folks are? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so Willie, I think I'm I think I'm sort of seeing an idea emerging from you here, which is for the places that have the amnesty box, the airports, mm -hmm. you're saying it should be like take a penny, leave a penny. Hundred <laughs> percent. So there should be the box should just be taken to arrivals. Yeah. <laughs> like those little libraries you see in some cities. Yeah. <laughs> take a joint, leave a joint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did see that um there is too much marijuana being grown in California. And so it's affected the price, and so they're trying to get uh, legislation passed that would allow the states that have legal marijuana to trade between the states. 
Sure. Oh, really? okay. Because huh. right now you can't, apparently. Right. So, because it's uh, not federally. Until it's federally. Yeah, whatever. legal. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're, they're dragging their feet because they're busy doing other important work. <laughs> if anyone figures out what that is, let me know, will you? Uh, coming up, we have um, building your own homemade guillotine, then trying it out. No, 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 no. Uh, looking no, forward to it. Still yeah. going. Uh, <laughs> we're going to check that out. And God. then, uh, uh, Pat. Yes. I've got, I, I, I'm i uh, not throwing you under the bus here. You um are quite open about the fact that you uh, put a little bit of dye in the hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of, uh, what is it you call it? Uh, a little rinse every month. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I go with the medium mash brown. Uh, Just correcting L'Oreal. nature's mistakes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We're going to find out why your hair is going gray. All right. Uh, it's in the news. Uh, it's all science. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. The show is also out there for you on our YouTube channel. Watch and subscribe.
Popcorn Mondays, free coffee Fridays, free parking. It's crazy Ernie's going out of business sale. Everything must go. Fergler's Hardware Store. If Fergler's doesn't have it, you don't fergin' need it. Hi, I'm Ernie Fergler. We he's Ernie Fergler. <laughs> if you don't come buy some stuff today, he'll kick your ass. Be there. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. <laughs> Awful entertaining. Essential morning radio. Uh, this is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. Now, Mike, uh, we don't really know much about you. I think my favorite show right now is the Osbournes <laughs> on MTV. I yeah. feel that's the greatest. Because I was always a big Ozzy fan, like, back sure. in the day or whatever. Black Sabbath. Uh, sure, yeah, all the Sabbath albums. But then the show comes out and you see him, you know, and he's, you know, shuffling around and yelling at his kids just like every other dad, mm -hmm. you know. Well, it's a little different, you know. Listen, man, Jack, you, you, listen, man, you, you got to get the trash on the curb by nine in the morning, man. You'll just <laughs> sit there, you know, to the next, you know, next time, you know, the trash people come around. I can't have trash sitting around. He's yelling about trash, man. I can't, <laughs> I can't deal with this, you know. He's the prince of darkness. I know, yeah. It's like, you know, it's just like, I, I, you know, I spent all day cutting, you know, cutting out these coupons, man. I can't, I'm not spending five dollars on, you know, freaking grape nuts, you know. Are <laughs> <laughs> the stars out tonight I don't care if it's cloudy or bright cuz I'm blind <laughs> Jeez. Hey everybody this is Jimmy Pardo you recognize my voice from the show and my face from television Welcome back to the Bob and Tom show Christy Lee at the news desk Hey <laughs> You don't have to Talk right up to the. You can take a breath. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. <laughs> I am a professional. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's Josh Arnold. Hi, Kate Steven Singer, sidekick chair. There's Ace. Hey. Ace Cosby. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning, Chickster. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. <laughs> we were talking about um, nudity and uh, walking around in the buff nakedness and uh, getting caught uh, I told my story about uh, getting caught in the hallway of the Beaver Creek Lodge in beautiful Beaver Creek, Colorado of course when the fire alarm went off <laughs> and then uh, one time under the uh, Eiffel Tower in Paris uh, uh, <laughs> I dropped a gelato uh, <laughs> I had this fine letter uh, from Zach Zach writes I live in the country a few years ago a friend asked me to check on their hog while they were on vacation. Okay. I went over there and their hog knocked me over face excuse me. I went there the hog knocked me over face first into the hog slop. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. I stripped down, sprayed off with their hose, threw away my clothes, drove home naked. Yeah. Oh yeah. I pulled up into my driveway. I was getting out of my truck. <laughs> Just then, <laughs> the meter reader lady came around the corner. <laughs> Caught me in all of my glory. She must have thought... <laughs> this was bad. She must have thought he got caught doing something. Who yeah. No, yeah, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah. But I mean, it's per perfectly reasonable. You can't, uh, you, you, right? You, right. you got to just toss everything. Sure. Ugh. Don't you keep a blanket or a towel in your car? I do. Yeah. You do? I'm, yeah, I have, I have a, shirt a towel. In my car and some shorts. <laughs> I, <laughs> oh yeah, just for just in case. Yeah. Well, let's go around the horn. Pat Godwin. Yeah. You have shirt, pants, anything in your car? No. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I have know, a towel. Just I have my I, I have my gym bag, so I have nothing yeah, to think so about. Yeah, so you have stuff. Yeah, and I've had to I had to use it the one time. I have a hat. I could just wear a hat. Well, you jettison. <laughs> no, no, you jettison your underwear. No, I had to use time. the time that I went through the car wash with the sunroof open. Yeah. God, that water was hot. Yeah. <laughs> what an idiot! I went through the car wash. What? <laughs> so what? Did, I have a question about that. So did you? Close the roof real quick. I mean, or yeah. I mean, did you? But I got soaked. Oh, did any of the soap come in? Like, oh, there was <laughs> an inch and a half of soapy water in the so bottom. So when of you the got car. out, 
did you go, what, what did you do? Well, I pulled over and did a little bit of bailing with a, a very handy Starbucks cup. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that you, you eventually looked over and your passengers were just staring at you. You had to be by wet, <laughs> Daddy! Looking at you like, of course this just happened. Of course. You were by yourself, weren't you? Uh, yes, I was. Yeah. No, I know. But, uh, but I drove over and did put on my put on my gym clothes. Did the people at the place help you? Did they know they had to have seen this happen? They didn't know they were, yeah, that's pretty dull. I hope job. you sheepishly just pulled out and <laughs> <laughs> Well, sometimes there's not anybody at the car yeah. wash. You just push the buttons That's in and go. True. This was the one where they had they wave you in and they make the obligatory. Oh, they didn't put the hose them. at the front end and does nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I never open a sunroof, but uh, I did that time for some reason. Anyway, yeah. Hmm. So, so, do you have a change of clothes in your car, Chick? I do not. No, Willie. Uh, I probably have some leftover clothes from the road. I think right now, hmm. I have like a t-shirt, pair of shoes in there. Is hmm. your car messy? Uh, right now, yes, very messy, mm -hmm. but it's usually very clean. I've been doing that thing where I'm going to get my car, I'm going to go to the place, get Detail, it cleaned, yeah. and I'm throwing all my trash in the passenger seat floor, and I've been, oh, I'm going to go tomorrow, I'm going to go tomorrow. It's been like two weeks, and there's yeah. just coffee cups. and. Don't you clean it out before you take it to the car wash? Oh, I, oh of course I do, 100%. Oh, okay. I just haven't had the opportunity gotcha. to do that yet. Okay, well, um, in, in any event, it's time to move forward here with Christy Lee at the news desk. Are we going to do the big... Uh, <laughs> I mean, we got. I've been sort of <laughs> Christy was angrily shaking her head just now. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mentioned this story. I, I look. I'll tell you what. Um, this story is a little bit. Uh, uh, what, what is, what's rough? The, yeah, yeah. What's the word they use? Um, Death it has sensitive. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's, sensitive it's, content. Uh, triggering. Yes. It, it, this may trigger something. This is sensitive. So, yeah. if it triggers you, turn the radio off. You. I'm going to give a, a spoiler alert. <laughs> In this case, actually, it's not a spoiler alert, Josh. It's a heads up. All right. Okay. <laughs> or heads off. An Indian couple used guillotine-like mechanism to decapitate themselves in a sacrificial ritual, according to police. <laughs> See ya. Hey, what you building? Oh, I got the new popular mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> I can build a guillotine that takes two heads off at once. You know, you're going to want to sand that. you got to sand it. <laughs> Imabhai Makwana, 38, and his wife, Hansaben, 35, both died by decapitation after using a homemade bladed mechanism in a hut on their farm in the western state of Gujarat, according to police. Uh -huh. A police sub-inspector stated, quote, the couple first prepared a fire altar before They're hot. putting their heads upon the <laughs> guillotine-like mechanism held by a rope. As soon as they released said rope, sure. an iron blade fell on them, severing their heads, which... Rolled into the fire. Oh, wow. Mm. They really made sure. Yeah, that's, this a, is, that's uh, a sacrifice. Yeah, it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet meets Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the front row, then you got the. Wasn't there someone who was beheaded who said he would participate in. Uh, an experiment. An experiment. He'd say, I, I'm going to blink my eyes as long as I can until I lose consciousness. And I guess he started blinking his eyes when his head was in the basket, I guess. I've I've heard, or I remember a teacher one time told us in a biology class that yeah. you can uh, see for like 30 seconds after your 30? 30, 30 oh, seconds? Yes. yes. Oh, that's what this teacher I claimed. I bet I, there's no reason why you wouldn't. Your brain still because you're, Exactly. All that is still in your brain. Your eyes are still working. Yeah, your spi but it's separated from your spine. So the, the, you wouldn't feel anything. The receptors shouldn't be able to travel back and forth. Yeah, I'm going to remember that forever. Yeah. <laughs> because apparently, this is, this is really, this will trigger you. Apparently, there was a murderer out there who would behead people and lift their head up and show them their dead body. Oh. <laughs> is this one of your horror movies? No. Well, that's, that's just sick story. and twisted. It's, it, uh, it's probably an urban legend, but can you imagine? No. The guy we were trying to warn for triggers earlier, he couldn't turn his radio off. He called him a pussy. He is crying right now. He oh, yeah. is crying on the way to work. Being beheaded and then having to be shown your headless body. Isn't that... Well, we're talking about well, kicking you know, a person what would you when they're think dead. You'd be, well, I'm dead. Yeah, yeah, this sucks. So, yeah. In, so in this case, it, or, it said uh, this guy, this cop says, as soon as they released the rope, an iron blade fell on them, severing their heads, and their heads then rolled into the fire. Mm. If you see the picture, it looks like 
it kind of went down a ramp. The heads went around a corner and knocked over some dominoes, then hit the fire. Kind of a Rube Goldberg <laughs> death. This fire sure is hot. <laughs> Only got another 20 seconds. That's uh, pretty, pretty weird, huh? Yeah. Boy. So, uh, well, look, I, uh, they weren't doing a ton for the world. They probably we can do they, without. They probably misread some uh, whatever. Yeah, what God do you have to do to, to please? Uh, yeah. uh, how does that, by the way, how does that discussion start? Honey, <laughs> uh, guess what we're doing Friday? <laughs> Honey, am I... Uh, Am I reading this right? <laughs> <laughs> you want to watch a movie? <laughs> now, if you're not, if you're not willing to, you know, die together, you're not really in love. I think these people proved that they're sure. fully in love. They did. The, they went, "Hey, we're going together." Do you put a, Do you put music on for that? <laughs> Probably. Little Alice Cooper. Going out of my head <laughs> over you. <laughs> Little Chuck Mangione. Cut my head off! Cut it off now! <laughs> Pull the rope! <laughs> Thing. No, that's not Do you think they did that cute thing when uh, they're like, all right, honey, on the count of three, one, two. Oh, you didn't pull the rope. <laughs> I know. Oh. All right, this time for real now. This time for real. You cuss. <laughs> Do you think the one of them decided that maybe at the last minute they were going to pull their head out? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Or was it some, oh, something where they're when they, I wonder if they... I think they really wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. You'd, You'd have to really want, want to. You'd do have this. to want to do it to build the thing. Sure. Right. Yeah. How long does that take you? Like uh, a month. And you yeah. got you got to sand that groove. Yes. You don't want the blade to get stuck. You don't want to get a splinter. <laughs> uh, I mean, stick your head in there and your neck get a splinter. If I'm building IKEA furniture that's going to kill me when I'm done, I'm losing that Allen wrench, baby. I am throwing away the instructions. I'm taking yeah, my time. Wouldn't it be great <laughs> on April Fool's Day at IKEA? <laughs> You're walking through, and they have a guillotine <laughs> without any comment. <laughs> like a real one. No. The skull and flopping or whatever. The... Has there ever been one that didn't work, and it just kind of got stuck? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apparently, yeah. there was a famous uh, decapitation where it, it only went like halfway through. Oh, God. Yeah. I forget who that was, wow. but it was somebody. It's kind of a famous story. Then what do they do? Push on it? Was... Well, they said, hey, come back tomorrow. We'll try again. <laughs> Steve Halfway Johnson. <laughs> Famous. Nine o'clock works for us if it works for you. Oh, my okay, goodness. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, well, what's coming up in the news, Christy Landon? Uh, we got Al Jackson, comedian, up next. Yeah, we have some interesting news if your hair is turning gray. Mine is. Very. Yes, it is, yeah. but it's very distinguished. Well, thank you very much. Not the pubes. You know what's the worst gray hair? The nose hairs, because it just looks like I have something in my nose. Uh, I know. <laughs> You're going gray in the in the booger region. Yeah, man. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. All Silver right. streak up there. Okay, we will, uh, Pat. You got a song ready for us. Gotcha. Look forward to that. Uh, coming up, uh, Al Jackson, as I mentioned, and uh, some interesting stuff in the world of news, including a puppy who may have saved the owner's life. That story. Oh my. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah. It involves eating human flesh, but yeah. it's still... Oh, oh no. Take the toe off yeah. of a guy. Uh, <laughs> boy. What's wrong with you today? Nothing. I'm just trying to enlighten people. I'll enlighten <laughs> people right now by asking you a question. What is your sleep number setting on your beautiful sleep number bed? 40. Thank you very much, Christy Lee. Uh, Mr. McGee? He did not specify. Well, I know. I it's was jumping in before dead air hit. 100, Tom. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, the distinction, if you'll allow me, uh, 40 is a less than firm mattress, uh, whereas uh, the 100 setting on a sleep number bed is a nice firm mattress. A sleep number bed. That's what I said. No, you said sleep number bed. <laughs> it's quite the difference. <laughs> Should I do it like it's a full name? A bed, comma, sleep number? Does that make you happy? That's nice. The sleep Sleep number bed. I'm back in mine. Oh, it's glorious. Eight out of ten couples prefer a different mattress firmness. The sleep number smart bed lets you adjust the firmness on either side. Josh has a sleep number bed, too. You do? I know, but for the purposes of illustrating the distinction of... Why am I why am I being heckled? <laughs> uh, yes, okay, Josh, what's your sleep number setting? 65, thank you for asking. Right in the middle. They're yeah. soft, there's hard, and they're right in the middle. Okay. Just right. The point is you can change it at the touch of a button at your home. Partner Storing Sleep Number has a solution for that, too. The Flex Fit Smart Adjustable Base can gently raise your partner's head at the touch of a button. The details, of course, can be found at sleepnumber.com. Go to sleepnumber.com slash BT show and find out about proven quality sleep. Lots of different things on different sleep number beds.
beds for you to help you get more sleep, including things about the temperature and um, things about the angle of your head and the firmness, all this great stuff about beds, and it's all incorporated into the Sleep Number bed. See which one appeals to you by going to sleepnumber.com slash BT Show. And right now, save 600 bucks on the Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed, their most popular bed. Plus, special financing is available for a limited time. Subject to credit approval, sleepnumber.com slash BT Show. That's sleepnumber.com slash BT Show. Up next, comedian Al Jackson. This is The Bob and Tom Show. All day, all night, all Bob and Tom. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Got a quick question for you. fantasy date with uh, Ralph and uh, Christy Lee. And interestingly enough, Ralph said you'd pick her up in your Mini Cooper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pick her take up her in the Cooper. Take her to a sushi that. place. Take her to a sushi place. And ask, some her, good ask, her, ask her about her day and what, yeah. what she's interested and in. And then yeah. and a little dancing. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. impressive. Mm-hmm. And see when you got Most when you're dealing don't with take an, you dancing. Oh yeah, you got to go dancing. You got to let her let, let your hair down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Touch her Are a lot. Are you drinking? Uh, I'm you drinking more than me. Uh-huh. Yes indeed. Yeah. Well, well, back up one. Back up one. <laughs> Touching her a lot? Yeah, you well, touch yeah, her when you dance. She, well, I, uh, you what I know about Christy uh, and you can you can f- you can feel out whether a woman likes to be touched, you know, and you touch her, you just make body contact, but not like you're trying to feel her up, but just put your hand on her back every mm-hmm. now and then, you know. And on You're a smaller smooth. back, let it slide no. down. No, it's just you can no, feel it. No, you are. You can feel it. What, what a would, woman is like what, an what instrument. Would you, what you would know? you wear? Uh, what I, practically if, nothing. If we're going to sushi, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> don't wear a suit. Don't put a no, suit on. No, don't, no, you no. know, it's no. just you just casual. Just put casual. A, a nice summer sweater on or something like uh-huh. that. So, you wear you cologne. Know. Uh, just a little bit, yeah, not what, too much. What kind do you wear? Yeah, I go with Gucci Envy. You know, is that you have that on now? Yeah. Yeah. Christy, give him, give, give, oh, him, give him a snort. There. Get in there. And, uh, oh, my you know, God. I just, uh, did you very clean. Him? Did you lick him? <laughs> I think she did. That was yeah. nice. Tom's going to get a whip. <laughs> I got to hit that. <laughs> yes, you do, Tom. He's I very clean. Really, really good. <laughs> this is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you know that? I'm getting a little creeped out here. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Tom, Everybody you look like you. And <laughs> I'm <laughs> Tom, you look like your adopted son has just graduated college. <laughs> and you're over there. And this is the one from Cambodia. Uh-huh. And this is the one from uh-huh. Africa. I want to smell boy. Christy now. Uh-huh. I didn't put on anything. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, that was hilarious. Oh, my I was God. The way it smells good, Ralph. Does Ralph smell better yeah. than Christy? No, I, I, He's I, wearing I, cologne. I'm not. That's no, not fair. Christy smells like her shampoo. She smells good. But no, Ralph smells. You smell great. What's that stuff called? It's called Gucci Envy. It's, it's very a small, clean yeah, smell. Yeah, it's nice. That is not. Not bad. Not and, and, and see, men men have a tendency to put it on until they can smell it. You're not supposed Can't do that. to. No. You spray, spray it in the it, air, walk just walk through it. and walk through it. That's right. That spray is always walk. enough. Just spray mm-hmm. one time. Don't spray mm-hmm. four or five. Spray and just walk. Just one time. See, I'm not a cologne and person. And trust person. that other people. Now, when you walk it. through, when do you spray it? Do you spray high? No, you, you spray, spray it about it. You spray it about below your eyes. Neck and chest level. And then neck and chest level. Sprint through it real quick before it hits the ground. How do you do that? I've never heard of that. you going? Yeah, you stand there on the ready like it's a sprint. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So you spray, spray and then you otherwise, spray. otherwise you're going to have penis in there. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, it smells good. going to hit you right now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So you got to move while it's kind of right. I mean, if, you're spraying, if you're spraying chest high and walking right. through it, yeah. I'm sorry. You're uh-huh. going to be in well, the see, boys. That's the other it, thing huh? about scents is that, is that women love to explore, too. So if they catch it. And, and then you know they'll try to go and look for it again a little later. Oh really? You know, like where was oh, that? Well, well you maybe are I an maybe I should just yeah. coat it. Uh, in, uh, oh. I was raised by wolves, uh, so I understand women. Okay, I, I understand women a little That's bit. That's really. hits of the 70s this week timothy by the boys from may 1971 
Now here's your host, Oliver Lang. <laughs> okay, let's see. The lyrics are kind of hard to understand here. I'm just, I'm just reading them off the album cover. Three guys are trapped in a mine. Let's see, Joe was looking at Tim. Oh, what the f***? They ate him! <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, I'm gonna be sick! <laughs> <laughs> this has been Oliver's Cliff Notes Hits of the 70s. Okay. Sean Mori is here with us. Sean, nice to see you. Uh, yeah. I get annoyed by certain things. You know, People who use the word friggin'. Friggin'? What the hell is that? <laughs> Make a stand. <laughs> Either say the F word or say golly gosh darn. Right. <laughs> what does friggin' mean anyway? I'm almost mad enough to cuss. <laughs> don't push me. <laughs> I'll say friggin'. I don't give a shooby dooby. <laughs> I heard a funny word the other day. Cripes. Cripes? cripes. Some guy said, for cripes sake. Who would that be? Jesus Cripes? <laughs> <laughs> the son of gosh? <laughs> and Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. A little bit. <laughs> We want to look good in the painting. <laughs> Hi, this is Augie Smith. Deal's coming up. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Josh Arnold is here at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Are you guys sure you want me to read all 13 of these botched executions? Yes. Uh, no, <laughs> thanks. Oh, thanks. I thought off the air you said you to do the whole thing. Oh, now he's fine as conscious. Okay. There's Ace Cosby. <laughs> hey, friends. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Hello, Tom. Um, uh, Josh was just doing some follow-up work on the uh, weird story we had earlier. This Tom, morning. I'm not, I'm not going to get you the full story here, and I know you're going to get to the story okay. uh, that we talked about, but uh, did you know that there was a man he was sentenced to death. <laughs> That's oh, funny. No, sorry, sorry. And uh, this uh, in Florida, um, and uh, he was 350 pounds, and the they had to construct a special electric chair. Oh, to do a Wow! Can you imagine electric booth? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Electric booth. Electric couch. <laughs> yes. Just, uh, hey, hey, man, we're going to get to it, but we got we have to build your chair first. Uh, hearing them, like, sawing and drilling in the, in the back. We have to fly in a consultant from California to kill you. There's there's one guy, yeah. he doesn't live in state. Oh, boy. Do they measure the guy? God. Yeah, yeah, they must. I mean, I'm sure he deserved it, but my gosh, that's uh, that's a... That's rough. Well, we can't put you in the electric chair we have. We have to make a special one. <laughs> it's like asking for the extender and the seatbelt thing in the plane. Right, right. Can you get me the, the husky chair? Yeah. Uh, we are joined in by... In the handsome uh, chair by... Oh, the handsome chair. That's good. It's it's comedian Al Jackson uh, joining oh, us. Oh, hey, I was uh, into the, 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 the electric chair talk. And then, Tom, you said something. You said a word you don't hear that much anymore, but my childhood was filled with it. Going to cheer, uh, going to Cheers, going to Sears, going to J.C. Penny, Husky. Yeah. yeah. When did Husky go? There was a Husky section in T.J. Maxx. <laughs> right, right. Where did Husky go? Hmm. It's not a bad word. Yeah, it's it, not. It's it's. I think it's inoffensive. <laughs> I mean, sure. It seems like a word that would be chosen by people that are overweight advocates or whatever you will call them to be like, hey, because somebody might be like, well, a doctor can say that you're fat. It's just fat on your body. And they're like, I don't like that word. Well, what word do you want? I would want husky. I like that. It's kind of like, like a friendly masculine dog. and, you know, <laughs> yeah. animalistic. I'll be honest though, Al. I'm I'm a fan of the word fat because I don't think it should have the negative connotations that it does. It, it's we should all be comfortable with saying fat. Huh? Yes, absolutely. And here's the and I say this all the time on the show, and you still have to watch yourself, even when you are trying to uh, show that you're down with something. But there's like all this talk about body shaming and like, oh, you know, Rihanna looked what a chubby for on the Super Bowl. There's a lot of dudes that like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
You can look. You can be dudes. fat and look good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like it's it's in it. Some guys. I used to hang out with the dude, and we were perfect for hanging out together. My homeboy, Ronnie, down in Miami. He liked waifs. You know <laughs> oh, really? Waif yeah, like an yes. olive oil type. Yes, bro. Like I, I remember talking to him. We were hammered, and I was like, "How big is too big for you?" He's like, "Anything over one fifteen, I'm out." Oh, it's just his thing. I know. He's and not I was being like, judgmental. You know me, Chris. Christy, wow. I was You're like, the "Let's opposite. hey." Hey. Yeah, hey, give me that BB oh, Rex or whatever. Yeah, I, I like I like him curvy. So it's just interesting that like you can't even. I feel like I've been shamed as a dude that likes. I like my women uh, thick, soft. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I like them curvy and yeah. like that's feminism. Say, I use, like that. Use the term curvy, mm -hmm. sure, but you wouldn't say. <laughs> Sorry, you wouldn't say I meant you see this young lady husky. No, no, <laughs> it doesn't go. You would There's one word you can call a woman that I think is worse than the C word. Oh, what? yeah, what's that? Dumpy. Oh. Don't ever, oh. <laughs> if you refer to oh, yeah. as dumpy, oh. that is that's yeah. not like a positive. Uh, that that's a weird that you, you Josh, you stumbled onto something. There needs to be a genre of words that are not curse words. Not words that you could not say in an office place, but are worse than any of those words that would be on <laughs> right. Right. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. That's one of them. So we need, yeah, we need to have the listeners write in for words that are legal, but way worse. <laughs> Dumpy yeah. is... Dumpy's number one uh, yeah. in the college preseason poll. We were talking about this uh, yesterday. That uh, do you ever have the kids in the car and you? Well, there's that radio station that plays kids versions of song, Kids Bop. Sure, I would imagine oh, that's no. mostly what you listen to. Yeah, and and, uh, and I, I was really surprised they did that song, Shut Up and Dance. They actually said Shut Up because <laughs> Shut know, Up is a bad. If, if our kids slip and say you know the F word or the S word, it's okay. But if they say Shut Up. Mm -hmm. Especially to mom. <laughs> oh, yikes. Oh. Man, I can't even imagine saying that to one of my parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's inconceivable. Yeah. It's, it's, now, it's Al, can you imagine a, if, if you were on Daily Blast Live and one of the other folks on the panel looked at you and said, hey, shut up, Al. <laughs> <laughs> It'd that, be game on. <laughs> That, that happened is... in a Ted Lasso episode recently. One of the, there's a little girl that is in the car, and she goes, "Can I say a bad word?" And her uncle goes, "Yes, you may." And she goes, "You're stupid." <laughs> oh yeah. And I mean, in our house, you couldn't say the word. That also, it was another it, episode it, of Ted Lasso where that happened, where I was watching it and I was screaming, "Shut up!" at the television. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Josh, are you are you not on the Ted Lasso train? No, he's not. It's kind of a running. I've never actually watched it. I'm I've sure. never watched it either, great. but it's I won't because show. other people like it. Right, right. right. People accept joy. Great, right. Really oh, good show. Lovely. Al, um, what about the uh, the term? Term, and this is a somewhat uh, pretentious, Rubenesque, or I think technically it should be Rubens-esque mm -hmm. for the uh, the oh uh, weightier, Lord. fleshier. See, it's nice, but I think yeah. all these are terms to not to for people to try to not say fat, and we shouldn't have fat should not have the negative connotations. How about it does. how about something uh, is corpulent acceptable? No. See again, no. Uh, yeah, I, no. I think it's just like masking that. something. What about wide load? <laughs> what about that? <laughs> <A> morbid, <laughs> beef <laughs> cadet. Oh <my> beef <laughs> cadet. <laughs> I remember that. Is so that. Crazy. That's a good one. <laughs> Al Jackson what about is our thick, guest. I'm what sorry, about Al. thickums? Let me ask Christy. Thickums. Thickums, because I would say in a lot of uh, like. Urban parlance, you could get away with saying, "Man, she's a thickums." But I think if you were talking with like a uh, overweight people advocate, they would find that offensive. Whereas, like, I feel like the streets kind of determine what's offensive and not. And like, we are the streets, mm -hmm. even you, Tom, uh -huh. and we've all determined husky is not offensive. But I feel like somebody that like makes their living finding those words would figure out a way. A husky's an animal. And they uh, can balloon up to 400 pounds. It's like whatever. Uh, some dudes like that. Some women like that. I don't. I will Gosh, say though, if I was like riding the train and like a group of 17 year olds were making fun of me and one of them called me husky, that would hurt, man. That would totally hit. I think out of yes. the wrong mouth, it's not a compliment. Hmm. Willie G, I will tell you this. Speaking of words that that are totally inoffensive, and this one is actually uh, maybe the most common word you'll ever hear in your life, and it still rings in my head to this day. This is probably 15 years ago. 
Me and my buddy Forshaw, I think I've told the story before. Uh, he's, I think he's been on the show before, but he travels with Jim Jeffries as his opening act. And we were playing uh, pickup basketball in Miami, and there were these high school kids that were playing on one end of the court, and there were eight of them, and they needed two guys. So they were like, do you guys want to play full court? So we were like, okay. And so we go, and we kind of mash up, and one of the high school guys said to the other one, what teams is everybody on? And he said, well, it's me, you, and the two adults and Mike, and just him calling us adults, <laughs> it just, like, he just said it so, like, it was such an, like, a removal of, I didn't think I was that old at that. I was probably, like, 30, but it killed me. <laughs> he, you, and the two adults. He didn't identify as an adult. <laughs> no. So, yeah. yeah, it's right. But this kind of proves, like, the, honestly, uh, there are only, I'm going to say, 10 words that are offensive on their own. That just as a word, they are completely offensive. The rest is all about intent. It's all about well, intent. Josh, we don't have time to talk about that when we have time to... We just got to cancel people. Let's just yeah. ruin somebody's career. Right, yeah. right. Uh, destroy their family so they can't look their kid in the eye at dinner. Tom, and yeah. then we'll determine later that that's actually a positive term, but it's too late. We had a story... Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know that we talked about it, but you and I definitely talked about it. And I would like to get Al's opinion on this. Did you see the lady <laughs> on the news? She was a middle-aged white woman, maybe a little older, and... Uh, they were talking about Snoop Dogg's new uh, wine. Yes. And she used the full phrase, the faux shizzle phrase. Yes. Wh wh where do you come down on that? And she was asked, I, I don't I, know if she was fired. I don't remember. She was asked to go off the air. They took her off the air. No, okay. she was not. Yes. Cookie, please tell me that's not true. No, they took her off the air. Yes. It's a true story. There, that is, I, okay. Here's where, as somebody that's on TV, I'm just saying, in general, because I don't agree that she should. I don't think there's anybody watching that saw that woman <laughs> and said, you know what? She woke up that morning like today. <laughs> I'm going to subvertly put in, you right. know, a racial. I don't think if if I'm wrong, if she is some kind of master uh, <laughs> manipulator of linguistics, <laughs> right. okay. But you know what? It was it was somebody from a different generation trying to relate, and ironically, the phrase she was using is probably, Snoop is like 55. That yeah. phrase yeah. is probably 30 years old. Right. She heard it, didn't understand it, which should be to her credit, which means that it's not really in her head what she was saying, obviously. Yeah. And so the idea that you remove her from air rather than, one, having a fun mo Like, dude, why did we just let... We just let the squares take over. <laughs> yeah, yes. I really, I hate where we are as a society where we just have just the, uh, I don't like that. And you, you, we hate, it's like, where are the fun kids in the class? I was like, man, chill out. Like, she clearly she clearly didn't mean anything by it. She didn't this know what it meant. To, it wrong wrong when, I, when I read the article, Al, I, I texted both Willie and Josh. I said, I don't need, what's the problem? What did she say? I don't get it. Right. Because I don't know anything about, all I know is that he had the, he, everything rhymed with Izzel. I thought it was like pig Latin. Ex yeah, you I did. didn't read it. was referential. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good idea. I can but tell yeah, you that. It's, I think the, what you're, the word you're looking for, it's the gotcha mentality. There are people who wake up every day waiting for anyone to do anything, and they go, gotcha. And please, yeah. not yeah. to interrupt, it's not pig Latin, it's doggy dog Latin. Please get that right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Especially on his birthday and, today. And Snoop and honestly, has, Snoop Tom, has what, become what so mainstream. About, yeah, I mean, people, what happened was, it, it, it was like there were things going on in our society that weren't cool. And we started calling them out and being like, hey, you shouldn't say that. And, you should, and people were like, you know what? You, sh you, you know, you shouldn't say that. That's kind of like offensive to indigenous people. Or okay, that's cool. But then it became somebody's job. Yeah. And once it becomes your job, you are not receiving it. You're out looking for it. And you're you got to pay your bills just like anybody else. And so if you have to feed your website or your YouTube page with like, here's the daily outrage of the day, you have to comb through things to find things. And anything that's on the borderline, you just put this person in front of your millions of users. Their boss has to react. And now here we are, and, and what happens is you start to change people's minds in terms of, uh, you know, hey, I, I don't want to offend people, but now I will use the word hate because I hate the people that are, like, seeking these people out like Terminators, when it's <laughs> yeah. really just like, in this case, it's an older woman trying to, like, I could, you know, I could see somebody that I loved saying something. I've said things where I didn't know, like, really what they really meant. You're like, yeah. oh, that means... 
that's a term that was used. Like, yeah. well, I don't know every. What, what are we doing here? Right. Yeah. yeah Fascinating. They're, they're out to get yes. you. Yes. And, and a lot of, as terms change, it needs to be explained. Uh, for example, a place like Squaw Valley is changing its name. Yeah, as, sure, and sure. The, but that has to be explained to people why they're doing it, what the origin of the word is, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And instead of just jumping all over them, oh, my God, he said Squaw Valley. Uh, we have to get a quick word in here. We only have time for one word today. Al, can you help me uh, with the the latest word out there? Yes, that word is Squaw Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Man, okay. I love y'all so much. All right, Tom, we only got time for one. Uh, Tom, use the phrase uh, mad heated, son. <laughs> love it. Uh, is that is that heated, H-E-A-T-E-D? Yes. Mad heated, son. Uh, anger? <laughs> she was mad heated, son. Mm. That's what I would have guessed. Yeah. No? No, I mean, no, you, you got it. It means, like, to be angry, I'll give you that. But I need you to use it properly. I feel like you're starting to get the terms, but you still work them in like an FBI agent. Let's <laughs> be clear really quick. I feel like you want to say, I just got a new Range Rover. Those seats are mad heated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, oh, boy. Um, uh, I don't know if you saw the guy in the tux, but uh, the... Uh, the uh, trousers uh, only came three <laughs> inches below his knee, so he arrived at the wedding mad heated, son. He was angry mm. about it, huh? Oh. No. What? <laughs> no. Trousers. <laughs> trousers. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't, doesn't apply to trousers? Not at all. Chicky, can you help him out? No, I'm mad heated at Tom for saying trousers. <laughs> That's it. Yes. That's it. Yes. <laughs> mad heated. It means extra angry? <laughs> So angry, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Al Jackson is featured on the Daily Blast Live and occasionally hits the road doing stand-up comedy when he's not on his uh, commentary show. Um, and have the rest of the cast of your show seen you do stand-up? Yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. I've, I've performed here at the Comedy Works a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I have uh, a bunch of shows this weekend, I'm, uh, but they're local shows. Uh, my new album, which I'll announce, will be out uh, next week. Uh, so I'm just getting, I'm working on new material. So I'm staying around this summer and then, uh, I want to see if I can put on another album in like another six, eight months. So we're going to, we're going to put the pedal to the metal. And what's the title of the new one? Uh, well, oh, Tom, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> we, let's take a, a vote. And I swear just from the Bob and Tom audience, whatever the vote is, uh, I will go with, I'm doing two different things. Obviously I talk about my car being stolen and my house being burglarized. So my two title options were one you got to walk with that All and right. that's what Hannibal told me when I was sitting in my empty home and he was like you know what she's got to walk with that for the rest of her life what she did or I was going to call it thieves in the night oh I like the first one me too those are the two right now the first one's the leading candidate but yeah how do you feel about shortening it to walk with that oh I like that. Everybody hates it. I, you got to no, walk I with like that. that. It's, it's I hate clumsy. it. I like yeah, that. Yeah. And I think Thieves in the Night sounds too much like the new Game of Thrones book. So I would go with the last. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, I could, yeah, uh, one of those spinoff series. Yeah. Yeah, walk with that. Hmm. That's cool. Um, walk with that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, uh, well, if anybody likes Thieves in the Night, let me know because my uh, both my things were stolen overnight. My car and my home. So, <laughs> and your ceiling. It does have some, res is some resonance with me, but I do. I like walk with that. I'll never forget he said that to me. I was sitting in my empty basement. I was like, you know what? He's right. That's and good. now I'm going to Target. And you don't want to get pinned for cultural appropriation, Al, so please don't spell walk, W-O-K. That's very insensitive, okay. so please. Uh, <laughs> right. I guarantee you that's already a, 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 a cooking uh, a cookbook. I yeah. guarantee you. Or do that, D-A-T. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> walk with that. <laughs> hey, By the way, I have a walk. It's the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this portion of the Bob... Thanks, Al. Thank this you. portion Hi, of the Bob and Tom show. See you, Al. Brought to you by Angie. Tell me more, Josh. Angie's list is now Angie, your home for everything home. Angie doesn't just get your home projects done, my friends. Angie gets them done well. Angie is your personal home expert, having served...
150 million consumers to date with over 220,000 pros in their network. I sure love Angie. They helped me find some pros to work on my roof. It was easy. Just a few taps in the Angie app and I was all set. You can also go to their website and just a few clicks. You can have Angie tackle your home service project from start to finish or you can just research and connect with local pros for a specific project. You either want pricing on, information on, whatever. Angie can help you get a fair price for your project that was huge for me you go on there you let them know what you need what you're looking for and they tell you the cost there are no surprises no sticker shock after the job is done angie has projects that are priced up front as i said and they clearly lay out the cost before you buy my go-to for all types of projects that's angie and she can help with hundreds of projects. Maybe you have a small repair. Maybe you just need a new mailbox put up. I was talking to Jessica Alsman from our staff about that yesterday. And I said, hey, go on Angie. They'll get you hooked up. Angie, my go-to for anything I need to get done around the house. They're also perfect for major remodels because they know what you need. You find the pros who actually know what they're doing and can help you out. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Thank you very much, Josh. Coming right back, it's the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at Bob and Tom dot com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. This is Todd Berry. Okay. Uh, once again, Todd has just yeah. established yeah. that he's not into astrology, and but he's very proud. And now I'm going to read an off you know, news I can, I can, I can, I, I can back that up. Uh, my numerologist told me that astrology is a bunch of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I can, How many times did she tell you? Yeah. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Four, go ahead. This is a uh, woman fried a woman fried ate goldfish amid fight with X. This is in Pasadena, Texas. Authorities say a Houston area woman who was burned up at her former common law husband fried their fret their pet goldfish and ate some of them. In front of what? Mm. <laughs> Pasadena, in front police, of them? Pasadena police say it's a civil matter and no charges will be filed. The seven <laughs> goldfish were purchased together by the couple during happier times. <laughs> <laughs> now, this sounds like it's from the onion. I know. <laughs> it does. I remember when we bought the goldfish, <laughs> how much we're in love we yes. were. So Police spokesman Vance Mitchell says the man reported on Saturday that the woman took the goldfish from his apartment. Mitchell says the two argued earlier about some jewelry the man had given her but took back. She wanted the jewelry turned. Oh. So natu the natural go-to response is to eat goldfish. Right. Of course. Right. Goldfish. Officers who were dispatched to the woman's home arrived to find four fried goldfish <laughs> on a plate. <laughs> the woman said she already ate the other three. <laughs> Show him. Oh, I mean, you do eat other kind of fish. So yeah, I, I guess, guess. But geez. Stay away from her. I wow. Guess. That's a, uh, yeah, that's yeah. a. Kind of yeah. uh, basic instinct. What was Seven that? Seven uh, goldfish. Oh, the bunny rabbit. Attraction. Yeah. Attraction. Yeah. Yeah. Bunny attraction. Bunny Bunny. Glad they didn't buy a dog. Well, they bought the goldfish <laughs> during together. Happier during happier times. times. Oh, yes. Seven goldfish. <laughs> when did they buy the deep fryer? <laughs> 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 uh, next summer at the state fair. I was part of the team that launched the first, the first low salt, low sugar peanut butter into the category. It was called Simply Jif. It was targeted towards diabetics. I wanted to call it type two peanut goo, but. <laughs> yeah, of course you don't feel good, Greg. You ate an entire rotisserie chicken at 11.30 at night. You shoved the whole thing in your fat face in six minutes, Greg. I think you ate the rubber band that holds our legs together. I mean, come on. My birth certificate? That document is 54 years old. I also don't have the Declaration of Independence. Because I don't know if you've ever seen an organic peanut butter kid go off the deep end. <laughs> it is not pretty. Okay, these kids, they spend 18 years eating it, then they go off to college. They have one bite of a GIF sandwich. Six weeks later, they're passed out on a park bench with nutter butters all over their face. It's
Puppy Joe's down. Might taste like metal, but that's baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Essential morning radio all day and all night. Some might bug, some might schmitz, but for me, it's Bob and Tom 24 7, 24 7, 24 Time now for great moments in NFL history. The year was 1926. All star fullback Ernie Nevers of Stamford. Nevers played in all but 29 minutes of the games. Three years later, in 1929, Nevers scored all of the points for his team. This single game 40 points scored by a single player is still a record that stands today as the NFL's oldest. Hmm. Nevers also holds a few lesser known <laughs> and unofficial oh, records. Oh, really? Such go. as highest number of STDs <laughs> treated in a single season treated. and the longest winning streak with road horns. <laughs> this has been great moments in NFL Woo! history. Wow. Wow. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Boy, better get up get some extra hat. Comedian uh, Dan St. Paul is here with us. You know, bowling was an Olympic sport this long? Yeah, I saw that. That's bowling, right. Olympic bowling. Aren't we deviating from the ancient Greeks just to sure tap Sure we are. Now? Oh, I mean, yeah. The javelin, the discus, but no one ever said, Ulysses, Telemachus, put on your shirts. It's league night. <laughs> 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 Who are we supposed to bowl against anyway? You know, you're gonna have Olympic bowling. Let's go all the way. Let's have Olympic drag racing. Wouldn't that be great? Sure. Yeah. Hello, racing fans. This is Jackie Stewart at the Olympic Raceway. Where today America's big hope for the gold medal. Shirley Cha Cha Muldowney goes up against the People's Republic of China's Wang, the Terminator Hong Wen. <laughs> Wang, of course, a member of Mao Zedong's pit crew in the 1972 Olympics in Munich and five-time winner of the Peking Funny Car Championships. <laughs> <laughs> but both drivers will be hard-pressed to beat the time of this man, Pakistan's big daddy, Abdul Faisal Mohamed, in his souped-up Ford Festiva, the pride of Karachi. <laughs> you know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. Essential morning radio, all day and all night. You might as well shoot me when the beer runs out. Bob and Tom. Hey, details coming up. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. That's one. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. <laughs> hey, Chick McGee. There's Josh Arnold, the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chick. Jess Hooker joins us. Hi. Boy, he's got a lot of questions for you. <laughs> okay. What he's talking about. Happy St. Patrick's Day. He's been, uh... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Am I not allowed to wear green? You no. are absolutely no. allowed you're, you're, to wear green. Uh, muted Wonderful. colors, black, 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 gray. Black, black, All of you guys. Black, yeah, we, we're black. sick of that. Yeah, we yeah. Sorry, I was in a good mood today. Yeah. What kind of a color <laughs> is that? There's Ace Cosby. <laughs> Ace is all black. How yeah. dare you try to spread brightness? And I know. Well. I walked in this. He called me a damn red coat. It was very revolutionary. <laughs> I'm Chick McGee, oh. and here's here it is. The fun squasher. <laughs> the fun squasher. The, the fun fighter. Hero. Hey. We called them the fun fighters, yeah. Hey, true dat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wow. Yeah, double down on that. Yeah. yeah. Please. Mm -hmm. Just picking up on the lingo. Uh, no, they just that's a nice color green. Is it this in honor at 420? You're not a stoner, are you? Uh, no, no, I've never. <laughs> what would green have to do with well, well, the I marijuana? marijuana. Yeah. No, it's not. But I guess, yeah, sure. You know, I I guess I can take that on. It's yeah. not a it's not a, a, a loud green. It's a nice. It's a it's a, it's a uh, Kelly green. <laughs> yeah, right? it's a it's a cheerful yeah. Hence, Kelly green. Yeah, Notre Dame color, joyous okay. green. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. weed is a little uh, more muted than this, and it's a little darker. Yeah, yeah. more mm -hmm. olive. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, now, the the uh, color is the key to this next news story. Recent research provides new insight into why hair turns gray as we age. Really? The study conducted by researchers at NYU focused on melanocyte stem cells, which help huh? dictate sure, hair sure. color. Melanocyte <laughs> stem, stem cells. cells. They help huh. dictate your hair color. 
Though the experiments were well, conducted like on mice. <laughs> okay. did. The way he looked at you. And... Uh, so. <laughs> Scientists said their findings present a potential pathway for reversing or preventing the graying of human hair. Uh, uh, you can find out more in the journal Nature. Well, that's not, that didn't tell us anything. Uh, nothing, nothing. I've always heard that it was a, uh, a like an iron deficiency that causes. I always heard it was having kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, well, hey. Your thoughts. I don't think it's anything scientific. I think it's more spiritual. I just thought that God hated old people. Oh, okay. Well, just every a lot of images of God. He's he's gray. He's got a big gray beard and uh, yes. gray hair. So, in his image, it uh, implies that you're wise, right? Uh, yeah. uh, it can. <laughs> yeah, that's what I use mine for. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's smarter than uh, uh, me, by God. I like my gray hair. I have no problems with it. I've you, been I've been gray since I was 19, if not sooner. But it. I, is, Apparently, if, the, if there was a pill you could take right now, I honestly would not change it. I would like a fuller head of hair, but I can't do anything about it, so I'm not too worried about if that. If there were a pill for that, I would consider it. This is my opinion, but Chick, Josh, and Christy, you guys all have this like beautiful blend of your hair mm -hmm. lightening, and it totally works. If you guys were to dye your hair, that would kind of weird me out a little bit. Yeah, I would never. Do How that. do you feel about women going completely gray, like it, like at Josh and I's age, like forty? They just embrace it, and they're actually dyeing their hair gray, even though they're not actually full gray yet. Getting ahead yeah, of what if it looks good on them? It's, yeah, whatever yeah. they're happy. Everybody's with, different. Yeah. Having blue hair. I think it's better than a color, yeah. Yeah. like a red or a purple. That does, especially mm -hmm. a red, right, Tom? The redheads. Yeah. That's some people. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Garrett. Yeah. Her name, her last name wasn't Garrett. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm, yeah, but that the yeah. shower. Apparently incident. what happens, since you're right, it didn't tell us in the story how they were doing these experiments. When the stem cells, the, the ones that are responsible for your hair color, as we get older, they tend to fall out or not as replaced as frequently. Oh, that's interesting. And so now they can maybe be able to replace those stem cells. I see. And so the color would come back in your hair. Does oh, that make sense? Yes, You'll grow a third eye. Yeah, yeah. But that's man, that bouffant is going to look good. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Pat, yeah. um, this is no secret. I'm not throwing you under the bus. Mm -hmm. You have uh, talked about the fact that you do dye your, your the hair in your head. And, and what do you use? What is it again? L'Oreal? Medium Ash Brown by L'Oreal or just for men. If I want to go cheaper, do it five minutes. Put okay. a little rinse on there. Okay. Go for a medium and your ash philosophy, brown. when you dye your hair, you always do it uh, at a hotel with towels. Yeah, and I'm doing it all now. I'm in show business, so i got to stay, you know. You haven't been to a hotel lately, huh? No, not in a while. No. Ooh. I've been to the pool. <laughs> I got I, that. I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, his, his hair was orange last week. Didn't we it's have still a story? Orange. Uh, the hotel had a sign up, don't dye your hair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We had a guy send us a picture of it from yeah. this hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have a, a song about dyeing your hair? Sure. I dyed everywhere, man. I colored all my hair, man. Just for men down there, man. I dyed everywhere, man. Head hair, chest hair, arm hair, leg hair, ear hair, nose hair, lip hair, chin hair, neck hair, back hair, belly hair, brow hair, that hair above my ass crack. I swear, toe hair, shin hair, cheek hair, ball hair. I dyed everywhere. Oh, I dyed everywhere, man. And I don't have hair to spare, man. Black is cold down there, man. My pubes don't have gray hair, man. Like an aging drama instructor, I dyed Ever were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only gray I like is Dorian Gray. <laughs> 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 thank you very much. Willie, yeah. thank you for the compliments on our hair, but yes. you did leave out, and, and uh, he doesn't often show it. Can I say it? Ace yeah. Cosby. Yes. Beautiful oh, salt and pepper yeah. on top. Yes, yeah. May we take a look, Ace? In a minute. <laughs> but I Chick, know. Well, well, I know what you're talking. About. I don't know. I, I, all I, these years, I asked, he, has, Tom, he has hat head. You guys. I say two things to Tom every day. <laughs> I say good morning. There you go. There you you go. Look great. Uh, it looks good, man. And then I say today is the day. <laughs> And it's good to see people embracing it. They actually do a big thing in Chicago every summer. On Halstead, people gather. They march down the street. It's called the Gray Pride Parade. Oh. And it's really good to see people coming together. Very oh. nice. <laughs> Very nice. It's a, it's a rainbow all black and white. <laughs> grayscale. Yeah, yeah, that nice grayscale look. Yeah. Do you think Clooney helped the gray hair? Oh, God, he's beautiful. In, in the ER days when he had that Caesar cut and, he, yeah. and there was mm -hmm. some gray in there, I think that really helped us out. Well, I think uh, I think Spider Man. I, th I think Spider Man did a and bad Sam thing. And Sam Elliott. Spider Man yeah. did a bad thing for gray hair.
Why? Spider Man. Yeah, you know the the editor at the paper. Oh, Jonas or whatever. Yeah, he had those just this Jonah Jameson. Like a yeah. Those big white streaks and then those look cool. Like Wally Palnitz. Hell, are you talking? And then yes, and then Polly Walnuts. Polly Walnuts. And the Sopranos had that look. Wings, wing head. Coming up, we have big news from McDonald's. If you're a fan of the Big Mac, he looks right into my eyes. I thought that was a rare move for Christy Lee. Usually at my defense. Well, we are going to be talking about McDonald's. <laughs> that is how she looked at me. You're wide. a fan who isn't? I am a fan, You're yeah. a fan. A fan, fan, fan. I do. Fan, I'm fan, a fanny fan, fan. fan. fan, fan, fan. fan. I'm sorry. I didn't mean I do like way. it, yeah. We also have Slurpees in the news. Yes, we do. I'm not uh, big on those, but I appreciate that I they're out there. I was when I was 12. <laughs> That's why they're in the news. Uh -huh. We'll find out about that coming Damn up. Damn, kids. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Got a comment? Our email is Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. More Bob and Tom next. State law. Let's get back to the chinchilla. We we uh, sent uh, members of our staff yeah. plus Donnie Baker to your uh, garage. She is my mistake. So traumatized right now. She's not come out of her little house in a no doubt. Whole the day. chinchilla. Oh well, yeah. Well, that's because she met Donnie Baker. Mm -hmm. Yes. True. Her um, ears are as big as yeah. frisbees. They are yeah. very big. <laughs> I know. I can't get over how. <laughs> they're native they're. of South America, and mm -hmm. they use those to you know, and they're and they're nocturnal, so they must be a lot of listening they, going they on. They do in a South lot America. of listening yeah, at night. Size of those ears. They can't they see very well. And they respond, of course, with their brain by going, duh. <laughs> <laughs> duh, I'm a chinchilla. Oh, uh, wow, well, it's that great wow. big thing right there. That looks like a really nice fur coat that lady's got on. <laughs> I wonder what, what, it's what that's made of. <laughs> duh. Well, I'm in a rest for so I'm in a rest for a while so I can poop again. Duh. I can tell you. I'm, I'm not wow. like a dog. I can't play frisbee or catch. I just sit here going, duh. <laughs> I'm kind of like something in a frame, like a picture, except I just go, duh, and then I poop. Except you have to feed me, and I poop. I'm like a picture you have to feed. Duh. I can tell you what, they don't come when you call them. That's for damn sure. I will. But I'll come I'm if you call me. Again. He's heading out on the road again coming up this weekend at the Funny Bone. Make sure you check him out in Dayton, Ohio. That's Friday and Saturday night. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with a look at things you may have missed. If you're living in Ohio, check your Powerball tickets. Someone went to bed $252.6 million richer before taxes. After hitting that Powerball jackpot Wednesday night, the winning ticket sold at a get-go number 3279 in Macedonia, Ohio's fourth Powerball jackpot winner since joining the game in April of 2010. The winner can choose the cash option of $134.7 million, follows back-to-back -back Mega Millions jackpots being won on Friday, $483 million, and again on Monday, the $20 million jackpot. Both winning tickets sold in New York. Meanwhile, the Oakland Athletics have signed a binding agreement to purchase land for a new retractable roof ballpark in Las Vegas after being unable to build a new venue in the Bay Area. Team President Dave Caval said Wednesday night the team finalized the deal to buy the 49-acre site last week where the A's will plan to build the stadium that will seat between 30,000 and 35,000 fans close to the Las Vegas Strip. The A's will work with Nevada and Clark County on a public-private partnership to fund that stadium. Caval said the A's hope to break ground on the stadium by next year and would hope to be able to move into their new home in Las Vegas by 2027. And that's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up.
Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? Essential Morning Radio. All day and all night. Yeah, this is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. <laughs> you're not helping the show where you're going we don't want to go you think that you're a cut up we wish that you would shut up cause you're not helping the show you're not helping the show where you're going we don't want to go your moment of enjoyment will lead to unemployment because <laughs> you're not helping the show. Don't you see, Chick McGee? Your career needs a plan B. You're not helping the show. Where you're going, we don't want to go. Bob and Tom are seething. It's time that you were leaving because you're not helping the show. No, you're not helping the show. <laughs> yeah. Hey, folks. <laughs> Boom. It's me. And you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. That's 24 days and 7 hours. No, 27 days a week and 24 like the show with, with the guy who whispers all the time and saves the world. And Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> it won't blow up the world. Morning, Bob and Tom show. Yes, uh, if I could just have a few minutes of your time, I'd like to speak with you today about the joys of water sports. Uh, perhaps you already own a boat. However, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to upgrade your boat. Shut with... up, Ryan. I read the script all wrote. <laughs> 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 upgrade boats. I want them to buy one. I've almost got them, Donnie. Okay, okay. Uh, so... <laughs> the badass wave buster. Uh, beast on the water. Ryan, tell Checky Look Center and he'll buy it. <laughs> Get a free tube if you're not a large queen or like pork. I even gave my pager number, man. Donnie, all right, I'm not going to do this anymore, Donnie. Get back to work, Randy. You oh. screwed it up anyway. <laughs> when grandfather dies, life will be strange. When grandfather dies, my whole world will change. When grandfather dies, I'll scream and I'll yell, cause I'll be rich as hell. <laughs> and then I, I figured That's I didn't touching. need to write anymore. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24 Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. He's over there in the performance room. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. There's Jess Hooker. Hi. She joins us. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. T minus one hour till I can celebrate the beautiful holiday we're all having. Oh, <laughs> 420. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much, Chick. Uh, we've got a couple 420 requests coming up. But uh, before that, I have a request. Oh, what's that? Weren't oh. you going to ask uh, Jess about a shower or something? Oh, or no. What were you talking about? Well, yes, I was. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have to check in with Jess in just a second, but I think it's very important that uh, people right now have a palate cleanser. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, and of course, what's better than that than this? Bruce, that yeah. sexy man with a deep voice. I knew it. Ace Cosby, here he is with his joke of the day. Tom started it, and uh, people sent this in, so here we go. I tried building a guillotine once. Yeah. All I got was a splitting headache. <laughs> that was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. I didn't write that one. It's, uh, it's on. It's on brand, Ace. I, I got to tell you, it sounds like one of yours. No, uh, yeah, I would have done better. Uh, okay. Well. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Something happened a couple days ago on the show. Uh -huh. There was some confusion, and uh, uh, Christy stated that her mother always taught her. Oh yeah. To um, that's right. Never wear panties at night. 
while you sleep. Well, she didn't say while you sleep. I just said at night. Yeah, I know. So we all thought that's weird. You get no, home. No, I did. No, no, I did too. You, you and thought. your your sycophant yes. thought the same thing. <laughs> yeah, doppelganger. Yeah, yeah, that's so right, thought, Tom. This yeah. is weird. <laughs> you get home at five o'clock and start airing it out. I had I'd never heard that. I um Yeah, no, I I've I've always uh I had women in my family that said the same thing. When you put on your pajamas, you just take off your underpants and you just sleep in your pajamas. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So and, and did they ever use the words air, air it, it out? out? Air it out? Sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they did. It, it probably wasn't even that polite actually, but yeah. No. Mm. I think it is. You air it out. You 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 let it fly free. You let it. Uh, oh. yeah. Whatever you need to I do. Guess air it out is better than <laughs> let it all hang out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Christo's Valley Curtain. <laughs> if you've got something like, to hang, like, hang like, out, that is that is one of the most obscure references. Oh come on! I thought today the the, the TV show Coronet Blue is obscure, but the fine artist Christo and, and the curtain, his curtains. Yeah, that is a weren't they pink? Uh, that one was orange. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, orange. <laughs> and, 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 uh, but, uh, Pat was inspired to write a things. song. And oh. since you weren't here earlier, this is a song about um, our confusion. Pat and I were confused about when the panties came off. And, uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. And I had a weird dream last night where Christy's mom showed up. Oh, boy. Oh, hot. <laughs> when I went to sleep so very tired, Christy's mother came to me saying, please take off your boxers. Let it breathe. <laughs> I wonder how she got in my bedroom and is standing right in front of me. Air out the anaconda. Let it, <laughs> oh. let it breathe. Let it breathe like a fine wine. Let it breathe like Christie's poulet fousse. Let it breathe. <laughs> Boy, that wasn't as clear as the first time. <laughs> well, see, it's, a, it's the first time. Poulet fousse is a very good white it's wine. It's a wine. French oh, wine. Oh, okay. Yes. How, do you, how do you spell that? Pouli Fousse, P O U I L L Y. Well, there's a difference between Pouli Fousse and Pouli Pussy. There sure is a difference. They are different. Sweet, sweet Pouli Fousse. I'm sorry, how do you spell it? P O U I L L Y. F U I S S E. Yes, thank you. Oh, so it's. There's a dash in there. It's Fousse. Fousse, Pouli Fousse. Oh, I thought it was Pousse. Oh, no. Pouli Fousse. I'm sorry, what'd you think it was? Pousse. Pousse. You know, like in the James Bond movie, Pousse Galore? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very, very. Good. But you can you can see how you can see how Pat and I thought. Very good. Very good. That, that's just no. rather, rather bold of Christie's I mean, mom to be advocating tell him, Tom. going commando. I could see where you and Pat would think that, but uh -huh. yeah, the yeah, rest of right. us know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, just while you sleep, not when you're, you know, cooking dinner. Okay. Or out at dinner or something. Or out at yeah. dinner. Yeah, or at a movie. And as okay. long as it's not 6 p.m., it's a religious thing. Got to take our panties off. Okay. Uh, now, uh, it, it is 420, and uh, this is the, the the day celebrating the whole thing about the number 420. And there are a number of myths about it. How did it start? One of them involves some school guys. I think it was in Berkeley, California. They would meet at 420 every day after school. And um, was the term fire up a doobie, uh, <laughs> blaze up a, uh, what is it? Uh, so. It's just smoke weed. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Fire up a fatty. Uh, 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 Paul Gilmartin is a very fine stand-up comedian and podcaster. And uh, there was a time that he was... Uh, uh, into the pot. Uh, I believe those days are gone. Yeah. But uh, this is a story about um, his uh, pot smoking experiences and uh, experimenting with his actual uh, with parents. Uh, here we go. Comedian Paul Gilmartin, uh, <laughs> last time you were here, you mentioned the fact that you had had a, a rather unfortunate experience with uh, marijuana <laughs> involving your uh, involving your door and your car. And here's the, here's the reason why I really should not smoke pot anymore. I, just a couple months ago, I get get high. I'm pretty high. <laughs> I go out to to get some, you know, ice cream or something that you know that you have to have mm -hmm. after you smoke pot. <laughs> and uh, and I'm walking to the car and I'm making a list in my head of stuff I might as well get while I'm at the grocery store. I'm very intense into it and I get in the car and I sit down and I go, okay, I got the list and I look up and there's no steering wheel. I'm in the back seat. <laughs> And then, I, and then I pretend like I'm looking for something in case neighbors see me. <laughs> because a lot of people, when they look for something in their car, they actually get in and sit upright. Uh -huh. <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot. Wow. But I, you have to tell your friends that one. Uh -huh. There's no way you can you can hide that. Your parents know you smoke pot? I smoke pot with my parents. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I never told you that? No. no. Yeah, my parents had been nagging me for... for 
years of telling me, you know, tell what's it like smoking pot, what's it like smoking pot. And finally, they they came to me and they said it was like they had a little meeting. My dad was like, Paul, your mother and I have decided we're going to try marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you could rustle some up for us? <laughs> wow. Okay, Daddy-O. <laughs> Purchase us several cigarettes. I shall reimburse you. <laughs> You're going to write me a check and put marijuana in the left-hand corner? <laughs> but a friend of mine brought a joint over, and I didn't tell him my parents were going to smoke. I thought I'd surprise him. Oh, 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 oh nice. You know, and he's talking to my mom. That's a lovely house coat, Mrs. Gilmartin. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you have the stag? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> hey, Greg, light up that fatty. <laughs> yeah, you want more money for the pot? What gives? Come on, fire it up. <laughs> what, you hold out for yeah. it, man? Come on. It was fun for about two minutes, and then it occurs to me I'm stoned, and now I'm stuck with my parents for the next four hours. <laughs> Did they get stoned? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my dad just actually went to bed, and the next morning, my mind was racing all night. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom just sat there and asked a zillion questions. My friend is like, come on, let's go. Let's go to a party. I was like, no, you don't get a senior citizen high and then ditch him. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's like, my mouth is dry. Is this normal? Why am I so dry? Give me some juice. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. It is really, really weird looking at your mom and her eyelids are half open. It is really weird. <laughs> it was the, the whole thing, though, it really was worth it. Just to see the expression on my friend's face when he when he took a hit, passed it to my mom and looked back at me. It was it just it was it was just like <laughs> <laughs> it's like he was handing a nun a dildo. <laughs> Paul Gilmar. <laughs> Classic uh, smoking weed with the parents, ladies and gentlemen. We turn back to the uh, to the news desk with young Christy Lee. What do you got over there? Uh, this might be of interest to stoners. McDonald's is packaging its famous Big Mac sauce in dip cups. After announcing improvements to its burgers, the fast food chain has announced that Big Mac sauce dip cups are going to be available for a limited time Hello. starting at participating restaurants in the U.S. They will begin through the uh, McDonald's app starting April 27th. Those Huge. are, that is, uh, that's, that's good stuff. That's amazing. You know? mm -hmm. This is delicious. Exclusively through the app? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. All right. Yep. And All they're right. putting more sauce on the Big Mac. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're doing a whole redo. How about that? They're going to hmm. get things uh, delightful and delicious. And um, is the McRib still seasonal? Just uh, for a limited time. Yeah, isn't a that the idea. fall thing? It's a great idea. I don't know when it is. I don't know either. Did you read they're going to change it from McDonald's to McDonald's? Do you know that? Is that real? Is that right? Yeah. Wow. What? That's bold. E That's a bold move. E L L S instead of A L D. I wonder why they decided to do that. A L D is too ethnic, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Huh. Oh, my God. I think, been, I think you may have been misinformed. Uh, what? Boy. I don't think so. Look, uh, okay. it, look it up, smart guy. Okay. <laughs> I love him. I do know that HBO Max is just going to become Max. Yep. Dropping the part that everybody knows. <laughs> well, they everybody knows all, both of them, but HBO was first. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a pretty dumb idea. Uh, we have um, uh, coming up. We'll be checking in with Christy Lee at the news desk. Yep. We have another um, weed-related uh, song for this 420 from Tim Wilson. So I look forward to hearing that. Right now, I want to remind you, Mother's Day, May 14th? Correct. Is that right? Uh, so it's just around the corner. We can uh, have that box checked off for you if you uh, pay close attention. You start by going to IHateStevenSinger.com and look over the stuff that's available, including the brand new rose that says, Mom, I love you. It's one rose, but it happens to be dipped in 24 karat gold. And it's um, then painted with a beautiful neon green. It's part of a whole new series of neon color roses from Steven Singer. Like I said, 24 karat gold dipped, a real rose. So it's probably the only rose out there that'll last forever. You can get one of these. They start at $59. They ship for free, by the way, in a premium gift box with a personalized Mother's Day card from you. This is a home run. It's a, of course, uh, there's also, I should point out, a full-time, uh, a full-lifetime guarantee. And um, the shipping is free, as I said. IHateStevenSinger.com is where you find this and many other delightful gifts for Mother's Day and all those moms in your life. Your sister's a mom, she's a mom, she's a mom, your wife's a mom. IHateStevenSinger.com. Do something nice by going to there. And th did I mention that if, I, uh, if you get that order in by... 
2 o'clock today. It goes out the door today. If I didn't, I should have. That's IHateStevenSinger.com. Also, puppies in the news coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, fellas. This is Floyd Tucker, the over-the-road trucker. This is Bob and Tom's program 24-7. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. It is Thursday, April 20th. Again, I know I say it quite a bit, but we couldn't do this show without you, our Bob and Tom listeners. So thanks so much for tuning in. You know, you can see the Bob and Tom Show on our... Uh, We're talking with uh, comedians Mark Klein and Nick Griffin. Nick, anything new in your life? Uh, Well, no, I mean, I'm just out there, you know... Trying to make it work. Uh, mm-hmm. I think you got to try to enjoy yourself. Obviously, I, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a positive guy, very optimistic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've noticed that. <laughs> That's what I like about you. <laughs> yes. Is this like, your New Year's uh, resolution? Yeah, I feel uh-huh. like you know, 2010's your year. <laughs> no, I just I I need to be more realistic, and mm-hmm. I feel like you know. Um, you got to enjoy yourself in the moment because you know, in an hour, a day, a week, it's you know, it's all gonna suck again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because that's life, right? Good, sucky, good, sucky, mm-hmm. sucky, sucky, sucky. You say that in Japan, you're going to have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just hard adjusting to the sucky part of life because when you first get to Earth, everything's sweet. You know, when you're a baby... Mm-hmm. Everyone's kissing your ass, hugging you, feeding you, and then <laughs> <laughs> boom, acne, erections, calculus. <laughs> 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 Ice cream is so perfect. Why mess with it? Drew, do you like cottage cheese? I did prior to. <laughs> <laughs> I so liked no. it like two minutes ago. Do you uh, you like the pineapple in the cottage cheese? Maybe a pineapple ring? How about no. salt and pepper? Huh? <laughs> what do you guys put in your cottage cheese? <laughs> Answer me! <laughs> Man, I'm glad he's back. Are you? Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, it's Roy Wood Jr. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom, all the time, in your ear. Speaking of Kennedy. That's a good shout-out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a good shout-out, yes, uh, thank you. John Kennedy Jr. Why do you re- think they call us Skippy Little Suda Teddy anyway? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. You uh, want to go watch you. the uh, films of uh, Bobby's funeral at my place? <laughs> well, what do you know? It's uh, 4 a.m. and we're drunk. Well, let's make Whoopi. <laughs> Wear my Oxford pl- cloth. <laughs> I was on a plane with one of the Kennedys. One time. Really? Well, you lucky to be. Yeah, yeah. It was Ted Kennedy. He was on the plane. And he was in first class. You know, I was in the back. You know, sure. With the degenerates. But uh, <laughs> but what a great name to be born. You know, Kennedy or. or Rockefeller or something like that. My luck if I was born in the money, my last name would be Massengale. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, the big douche baron. <laughs> the douche baron. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you, know, you got waiters making fun. You want oil and vinegar? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and bring it. <laughs> my dad, the big douche baron. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24 7, 24 7, 24 7. Augie Smith is our guest. You go to California, swear to God, it's illegal to smoke cigarettes in bars and taverns. Mm-hmm. And I, I say, yeah, I don't know, no, smoking is bad for you, but who's concerned about their health in a bar? <laughs> what's, the, what's the complaint on this one? Excuse me, Mr. Bartender Man, I am trying to get drunk so I can drive home and have un- protected sex with some chick I just met tonight, and this guy's blowing smoke. 
fucking nonsense. <laughs> I believe that we should abolish all bar laws in America. I believe in America, the land of the free, there should be no laws in bars. And, and if you don't like living under no laws, then don't go to the bar. For uh -huh. example, I don't like Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't like what goes on at Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> so you know what I do about it? That's right. I, I don't, don't go no. there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I don't do about it? I don't picket Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't put Bed Bath & Beyond in an axis of evil with Kitchen Caboodle and the Baby Gap. I don't think the Bed Bath & Beyond should have to be 500 yards from an elementary school. I just don't go to Bed Bath & Beyond. I like, like Bed Bath & Beyond, doggy. <laughs> I'm a divorce guy. I, I need them. And I'm okay. I'm okay with you going there. Thank you. And I'm even okay with you smoking there. You know why? Because I don't go there. It doesn't affect me. I actually uh, I have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Well, check out. Uh -huh. mm. uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first, everybody. Safety first. <laughs> Bob and Tom 24-7. Not on air, online, all the time. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. There's Pat Godwin in the uh, performance room. Hello, chick. Yeah. There's Josh Arnold, the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chick. There's Jess Hooker. She joins us. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Oh, oh, hey, yeah. Extra cool today. There's Willie Griswold. I just realized next year it's going to be 4 2024 and it'll be a palindrome. Oh, oh yeah. it will. Oh, yeah. 4 2024. You know, if you guys were stoners, you'd be carrying me out of the room right now. That was yeah. a fun little thing to say. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We're not I'm the chick. audience, bud. <laughs> I'm chicken. Here's Tom. I don't wear my panties at night, my man. <laughs> Wow, hello three hours ago. Didn't I start... <laughs> three hours ago, three days ago. I, I, I sang that this morning. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? You looked at me like I'd stepped in crap. I was, that, you know how that... That's it how It was a works. tribute to you. Uh, <laughs> how yeah, nice. I'm, I'm that's very, very nice sure. of you, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, how many times has that happened that I don't notice it? I'm, I'm telling you, uh, Griswold, Tom Griswold would be the best... A press secretary, mm -hmm. just the way you can spin anything into uh, that, making it sound positive. That look on your face that no positive. one would question it. <laughs> Many think the president arrived on a helicopter. Of course, he transported himself uh, through a magic pen. Uh, I'll be taking questions. Uh, <laughs> However, no questions on how we came up with the magic pen. Okay. <laughs> First yeah. question, that guy in the dumb sweater. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you. Nice haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Have horn perfume. You're not. Oh, that's a, that's I don't a, even have a question. No, yeah. That's a nice sweater. Does that come with a rainbow button? Oh. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh. How often do you say the word abhorrent? Does that come up in your life a lot? I never say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, where was I? Oh, uh, I know. I was introducing Christy Lee at the news desk. What have we missed? A sheriff's deputy in Virginia has traded a Slurpee for some information on stolen goods. Deputy Five. WTTG reports deputy oh, it SA. Used to be, uh, oh, sorry. TBS, and they—that's what uh, is it? TTG or TCG? Go ahead. WTTG sir. reports <laughs> deputy S. A. Hensley responded to a neighborhood after several residents said deliveries were being stolen from their doorsteps. I thought you were going to spell his whole name. Officer Hensley. <laughs> Canvas the area. It's S A M. I thought it was S A. Sam. Oh, Sam. What's up, Sam? Goes by his initials, S A. Sure. Hensley uh, canvassed the neighborhood and stopped at a nearby playground where some children helped identify the two suspects. Uh, a they bunch snitched. of rats, a bunch of baby yep. rats. Big After mouths. the promise of a Slurpee, <laughs> the deputy located the juvenile suspects who did confess and led them to the stolen items where then they delivered those items to the correct addresses and apologized to their neighbors. Mm -hmm. Now they also planning the pummeling <laughs> of yeah. the other two children. <laughs> Officer Hensley was, uh, he kept his promise. He delivered Slurpee and some candy to the children on the playground. No charges were filed, by the way. This is one of those stories where a week from now, one of the kids will have had some sugar reaction to the Slurpee and the lawyers are all yeah. involved. So this is fine for this police officer to offer Slurpees and candy to get these kids to tell. But my neighbors get mad when I offer my neighbor kids Slurpees and candy 
<laughs> to help clean my basement. I'm glad you said basement. Come on down here, kids. I got Slurpees and candy. And the neighbors get all mad. You know what, Josh? I think that you should just show people that you're a nice guy. You can help these kids, even transport them. If I were you, I'd get a big white van. Yes. Make sure you get no windows on that van. I think that should make the parents just really trust you. As a <laughs> Put a logo on it of something pleasant and happy. Ah, yes, yeah. Like an ice cream cone with sprinkles. <laughs> Maybe have a little puppy named Sprinkles. <laughs> you want to pet this? <laughs> I can't even play this role. <laughs> it's scary. It's way too creepy. It's a scary Sorry. road. Well, speaking of puppies, yeah. did you see this story? Yeah, I got it. Here it is. Um, a bulldog puppy credited with saving his owner's leg. After chewing his toe to the bone. Oh! What? Sky News reports David Lindsay awoke from a nap by his wife's screams and discovered their seven month old puppy had chewed the man's toe down to the bone and cracked it. Uh, well, you know what? I will never sleep that deep. <laughs> yeah. That is so envious. Something to be. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, yeah. Michael, Michael Jackson knew what he was doing. Yeah. Damn right. He got a good night's sleep. <laughs> he got some, he got some Say what you nice want. Z's. Oh, man. The incident, however, revealed his foot was completely numb. Lindsay was rushed to a hospital. Doctors told him he had two blocked arteries and was in danger of losing his leg. Physicians are now working to open the arteries in his leg to allow blood flow to return. In other words, the dog did him a big favor by chewing on his toe. No, no, it didn't. No. Well, it did. I mean, this, otherwise he would have discovered it. I mean, he would have eventually know. woken up and be like, hey, I can't feel my leg. Yeah, let's go mm -hmm. to the hospital. He didn't need to lose a toe. <laughs> and that dog now has the forbidden taste. The yeah. bloodlust. He'll be chasing <laughs> exactly. that bone for the rest of his life. That's right. Well, never going to get it. <laughs> I'd be very worried about my testicles. <laughs> 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 We're sprinkles. Uh, yeah. Man. Oh, oh, did they keep the dog? Uh, they didn't say they got rid of him, so oh. I would assume. If that had been a cat, they, they chewed his face. You yeah, know, apparently that. cats go right for the face. Right now, the face. Uh, once again, today is 420, so we are acknowledging that by playing some of our uh, 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 pieces about uh, the world of marijuana. Mm -hmm. And we uh, wanted to play this one. This is uh, from Tim Wilson. It's about uh, not being aware of what is and what isn't a joint. Um, there's the great scene... Where uh, Jack Nicholson says, to, I think Dennis Hopper and Peter Fonda, an easy writer, <laughs> when he's offered a joint, he goes, No thanks, I brought my store bots. I always love that. <laughs> this actually happened to my mom at a party one night. <gasps> really? She asked for the back when, way back in the day when she asked for a cigarette, she was handed something else. No kidding. And yeah. she's been hooked ever since. <laughs> <laughs> she loved it. And she said, that was so good, I'll trade you these panties for that. Oh, this is, uh, this is yeah. Tim Wilson. Some weirdos moved in across the street and they were keeping my wife awake. Twelve hours of the Goo Goo Dolls was about all she could take. So I went over there, bummed a cigarette, and told them break it up pretty soon. Some aborigines found me two days later on the dark side of the moon. <laughs> Marlboro. <laughs> Was that the new Prince Albert in the left-handed can? Uh oh, that wasn't a Marlboro. <laughs> but this stuff's enough to make Janet Reno look like the Marlboro Man. It kind of looked like a lucky or a short pole mall. <laughs> Tastes like horse manure, but menthol. If it legally reaches the public's lips, there's gonna be a shortage of tater chips. We can finally quit hating Philip Morris's guts. Cause that stuff kicks a cigarette's butt. My brain said it's something it had never seen. But it beat the tar out of nicotine. Uh oh. <laughs> that wasn't a Marlboro. <laughs> but it's the Surgeon General's nephew's favorite brand. That, oh, that wasn't a Marlboro. <laughs> but two packs of that, I'll have the Backstreet Boys sounding like a reggae band. It'll have them fellers at the DEA coughing on the witness stand. <laughs> Jimmy Wilson and the classic. Uh, uh, that wasn't a Marlboro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in honor of uh, in honor 
of 420. Christie's mom smoking dope. Evidently. Well, it was an accident, yeah, but that actually happened way your, back in the day. Was your mom a smoker? Yes, back in the day she what, was. What was her brand? Uh, Territon. Mm. 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 Uh-huh. She smokes, she pokes. That's the old. Is that the old saying? That's the old well, saying. she had two children, so she obviously did it twice. <laughs> yeah. I, someone had sent me this a long time ago, and I've had oh, it sitting. No. Here. Oh yeah. What? No. Oh, the Territon ad. Yeah. This is a real ad, Willie. It was. Uh, it, first of all, there's a grammar error. You'll notice this, Josh. <laughs> it, the phrase is "us Territon smokers." Ah, oh, yes. No. Would rather fight than switch. That's they, wrong. They mean we. we yeah. Uh, but um, and in these ads, they would all have a black eye. In this case, she has a white black eye. Kind of weird. I don't remember. Uh, this is for Territon Lights, the, so they gave her the white black eye. I thought the slogan <laughs> was "I'd rather fight than switch." Right. I, don't, I, don't I think the there else. were multiple slogans. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a whole, whole domestic violence campaign. <laughs> I don't yeah. think so. I think you guys are wrong about the domestic <laughs> violence. The, the, the fight. They're fighting whomever. Who's they're trying to just, steal their oh, cigarettes right. and change their cigarettes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Not, they're okay. not being not a no. I thought they were no. fighting. I thought. I thought were, no. I thought the wife was taking her husband's cigarettes, so he punched her in the no. face. No. I thought Here's they were the fighting th- a long, you bitter see battle with a lung cancer. A woman with a blacked eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's bad. They had guys with black eyes. Yeah, exactly. Out too men, women okay. can fight. You know, but men are tough. Oh, you know? Jesus. The entire premise is a little bit. Uh, Thank you, Tina. I like it. Rather fight than switch. Yeah. You know, I switch brands. I uh. fight you for my Derriton. Yeah, see, she knows. Yeah. Your mom, when she was hooked, I, if I yeah. tried to take them, she'd probably oh, punch me in the face. She'd punch you in the face. Did you? She, didn't, she didn't have enough lung power. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever steal your mom's cigarettes? No. No, man, I did. Uh, Virginia <laughs> Slim 120 menthols. Oh. Oh, yeah, I got everybody hooked in middle school. Me and my friend oh. Eric, oh. we stole my older brother's cigarettes. Yeah. And then we smoked them under a bridge in a park. <laughs> <laughs> was Just as many as you could. One wow. of, one of, truly one of the best days of my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ace, were you ever a smoker? No. Have you ever even had one? Uh, I had a puff on my grandfather's... Uh, Little, what is it, Triparillos? Yeah, tri- oh, yeah. the Cigarillos? Yeah. And he made me smoke the whole pack. Ooh. And I got sick, and that's it. Oh, that, the classic story. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I had no idea. What about, the, uh, what about the dope? You smoking dope there with your rock and roll friends, I bet? Uh, <laughs> now you weed one, head. One, one time. One, one time, time you smoked some Ace dope. Wasn't Cincinnati. A pipe smoker. Holiday Inn. With who? <laughs> Frankie Benelli from the Choir Riot. <laughs> Hey, I love it. Why I not? love it. There you go. All of Ace's stories have like Uncle Cracker. They're so Frankie good. Guys from these great so bands good. in them. Isn't Frankie uh, totally sober now? He's dead. Oh. <laughs> so oh, he's quit. Yes. Yes. He quit drinking. Stone cold sober. <laughs> <laughs> quit smoking, quit drinking. Ace is the only one that can get, rid, get away with. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, timing. Okay. Oh, wait a second. Oh, thank God. No, nope, no. Nope. Save of the bell. Hello, Bob and Tom uh, show. Hi, Bob and Tom. You guys rock. <laughs> we, we would totally smoke up with Ace if he's available. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, is, did I hear Tony there? Yeah, Jimmy and Tony. Ace got high with Quiet Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We want to call, and uh, first of all, we want to sing one of our fine carols. <clears throat> oh, good. <laughs> Do you hear what I hear? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you ready for this? What? 
Okay, forget about wake and bake. Jimmy and Tony now present bake and wake. <laughs> okay, how cool is this? You can chief up while you're still asleep in bed. Wow. <laughs> right? Cool, right? How does it work, you ask? How does it work? Uh, here's Tony to explain. <laughs> okay, follow me here. Our dealer, Fat Brian, has a cousin who studied electronics at DeVry for two semesters. Right. Super smart dude. He rewired an old Mr. Coffee machine, connected it to the toaster oven. You add a bowl of your favorite strain of weed, Willie, set the timer before you go to bed, and voila, 12 hours later, you wake up with that sweet aroma of sticky icky filling the entire apartment. <laughs> Brilliant, you say? We think so, too. Uh, hey, hey, Tom, how many uh, shares of stock can we put you down for? Well, I'd be concerned about the fire hazard, frankly. I mean, you might be smelling the burning weed. I but think we, we can uh, tweak this idea. What's that? Couldn't you hook it up so that it would go through a CPAP machine so a that CPAP while machine? you're laying in bed... That's a CPAP machine? We don't have an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Willie? A, a CPAP machine? Mm, yeah, a CPAP machine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should really have a CPAP machine right here. <laughs> hey, Tony, write down CPAP machine. <laughs> Got it! <laughs> good luck, guys. Well, what do you mean, good luck? We're still looking for investors at this point. We're going to make so much money on this thing. We're going to be living in a mansion by the ocean. Mm -hmm. or, or at least be able to move out and get our own apartment. Either way, <laughs> that'd be sweet, right? Yeah, thank you. This time next year, you're going to be so jealous you didn't invest. Man. Uh, speaking of this time next year, did you know it's going to be 4 2024? No, Freaking! That's, <laughs> that's what I was saying, man. Oh. How crazy is that, right? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not usually even into numberology, but that, it gives me a shivers just thinking about it. And you're not going to believe this next part. I was looking at a calendar on 420, 24. 420 for the first time is actually going to fall on Tony's birthday. Whoa. Isn't that crazy? How's that, that possible? <laughs> I don't, no. think, I don't think that's right, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> My birthday isn't until April 20th. <laughs> What? April 20th at 4th? Wait a minute, dude. Today is April 20th. What? Oh, oh. Happy birthday. Hey. Dude, what are the odds? This is crazy. Hey, I think I hear the, I think I hear the cops knocking on your door. Oh, jeez. Well, I, I certainly hope not because uh, <laughs> we got, we got the... Crazy call. call. Thanks, fellas. Jimmy and Tony celebrating 420. Mm. Uh, uh, coming up, we're going to be celebrating uh, history, science, life, and love. But first, uh, we got a bunch of other cool stuff going on. And I want to remind you, the Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, of course, and it's been uh, kind of hard lately. All the weird stuff going on the last couple of years, perhaps you've been thinking about maybe getting some help for yourself. And it's not a sign of weakness to ask for help. It's very important. Therapy is about deepening your own self-awareness and understanding. So uh, this is where BetterHelp comes in. What's super interesting about this, it's therapy done online and and it's done over the internet. So you can do it by speaking to a therapist or uh, going back and forth like you were texting uh, to a therapist. And you do it so it's convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule and your needs. How does it work? Well, you fill out a brief questionnaire. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist. And by the way, very easy to switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. The service is called BetterHelp, and they have connected thousands and thousands of people with therapists. And uh, you could be one of them. So you visit BetterHelp.com slash BT Show to get 10% off your first month. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. Once again, you'll be hooked up with a licensed therapist. And the way it works is you fill out a... Um, it's sort of a form that'll kind of let them know what you're, what's happening with you, and then um, they'll f hook you up with a therapist that will work with you. Find your potential with BetterHelp. It's BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. And by the way, you'll get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. We're coming right back. This is The Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to The Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show you missed later today on our YouTube channel.
This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks very much for joining us. And uh, we're doing kind of a uh, musical chairs thing today. And uh, ex well, it's actually a musical chair right now because joining us in the studio, we have singer, songwriter, actor, and comedian Stephen Lynch. I throw in the actor thing because you spent a, uh, how did you describe it? Uh, uh, Nine sentence. months in hell. Sentence, was that the word you used? <laughs> Nine months in hell is what I just heard. Uh, you were on Broadway. Do you want to yeah. give us the, the give those that haven't heard about this the background? on uh, The Wedding Singer. You portrayed. The very popular Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore movie about crazy kids in the 80s. Turned into a very successful theater piece. Very successful. Well, you you did it for a long, pretty long Mildly time. Mildly successful. I mean, it was, it was, a, it, it was fun. But I have my toe on the trigger pretty much every day of the last <laughs> four months of it. Well, I realize I'm making it sound like it was really bad. No, and but I mean, it wasn't. It was just, it was time to move on, you know. Can you play one of the new ones for us? And I think so. Okay. We uh -oh. just had a little powwow in your producer's oh, office about what I can and cannot say on the radio these well, days. Well, there have been moments before. <laughs> you think this one's okay? This is. A... I don't know. Okay, well, if it's not. <laughs> I don't know. La ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Lynch. This is a song I wrote. Um, I discovered, oddly enough, that um, I had a, an uncle, a great, 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 great uncle who lived in the uh, medieval period. <laughs> he pretty mm -hmm. much did for a living what I do for a living. He was both a... So Amazing. A troubadour and a, oh. and a court jester, and I think he used to play in the court of the king and the queen. And, and I discovered one of his old compositions that he wrote for the lute, <laughs> and I uh, <laughs> transposed it to the guitar. Good, because we don't have a lute handy. No. No. I, I don't either. And, I, uh, I, I like guitar comics, but I hate period. lute comics. <laughs> 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 Prop guys and lute comics. <laughs> Those are the words, just, aren't they? Just, yeah. just hacks. They give us all a bad name. So uh, this is one of his compositions, and I just thought I'd try it for a modern audience, see how it goes over. Come, fair lady, to mine bed we go, and verily sweet pleasures we shall know, yet where thy belly meets thy limb, <laughs> I beseech thee, give a trim, for thy bush doth overflow. <laughs> <laughs> Milady doth have a 70s muff. <laughs> <laughs> a 1470s muff. Zounds. <laughs> 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 It is prickly as a Christmas wreath. <laughs> Think it might hide some baby birds beneath. <laughs> Pray, shave it off to make a coat. There are fur balls down mine throat, short in curlies twixt my teeth. I sayeth not thy is her suit. Mm. <laughs> but it looketh like thou hast buckwheat in a leg lock. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle was also a very hacky stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> but soft, what hair through yonder girdle grows to be or not to be put in cornrows. Oh, it is beastly and unruly, and it smelleth of patchouli, and that offends my nose. I sayeth not thou art furry down there. But it doth resemble Fidel Castro eating a London broil. Tra la 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 medieval bush. Bravo. Stephen Lynch. Thank you, lords and ladies. Thank you. Stephen Lynch, ladies and gentlemen. What is a loot? A loot is, it looks like a pear shaped ukulele. Yeah, it goes. Kind of a oh, well, there's, there's no neck. There's no neck. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Guitars. I think those are yeah. good. to change an old joke just a little bit. Uh, the 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 best sound a lute makes is when uh, a banjo lands on it in the dumpster <laughs> or an accordion. <laughs> one of the two. Um, uh, I'm sure there's a, a really a anti lute. lute I do not. Like life is to his except it's just at the end of the day you know i don't he had to move mattresses
and I tell jokes. Like, mm-hmm. everything else is exactly the same. I mean, you're I, out there driving around. And... It's a, yeah, I drive so much. And as a kid, I when I was, like, 12 years old, I'd been to all of the 48 connected states or whatever you call it. Mm-hmm. As, a, as a 12-year-old. Continuous. Continuous, that's the word I was looking for. Mm-hmm. But I, and everybody, they, oh, that must be great. Well, I've, I've driven past the exit to every place any 12-year-old would want to see. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's the Grand Canyon passing. Let's stop with this Flying J up here. Uh-huh. But, uh, oh, boy, that's great. My, yeah. my parents met at a truck stop. No kidding. Yep. Dad, trucker, mom, working. Uh, nope, not even, no? like <laughs> not even a good story like that. Not even a good story. where uh-huh. It would have been kind of like it could have been a movie if she was uh, sure. like a waitress and he was a traveling salesman right. or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the... They, he swept. She, my mom. This is a. She's a good person now, but she was hitchhiking, and she hitchhiked to a truck stop where she met a truck driver, and uh, I call him Dad now, mm. and they jumped in the rig with him, and they took off. That's a solid foundation for a marriage. Yeah. Su- surprising they got divorced. Not really. Surprising she wasn't murdered. Actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> divorce, murder. Yeah. Their love story starts out like a cold case file. <laughs> 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 It's 100% wow. true. I can't even tell people of how my parents met. I can't tell them the story. Yeah. Because as soon as you start out a story with a woman meets a man at a truck stop, they're like, I've heard it. He stabs her and throws her in a ditch. And I'm like, nope, they got married. No, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the sign said anybody caught trespassing <laughs> will be shot on sight. So I jumped over the fence and yelled at the house, Hey, what gives me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guy, it's Kid Tarmac. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Take that to the bank. <laughs> Tales coming up. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Yeah. yeah. There's Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chicky. Jess Hooker's here. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Hey, he said. There's <laughs> Willie He's Griswold. He's had enough of you. Hey there, big dog. I'm uh, Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Go ahead, buddy. During the breaks, there are some who watch on the um, closed-circuit cameras, mm-hmm. and um, they see things. They probably wonder what's happening. One yes. of the lucky few, possibly. I just want to say that most of you weren't in here. I was sort of half paying attention, and Jess, Jess Hooker was talking about something, some kind of magic cup or something. A uh, dog paw washer. Dog paw, yeah. It's a dog paw washer, and it has bristles in it. You put a little bit of soap and water, and then this is what I did. I said, and then you put your dog's paw in it and go like this. <laughs> Up and down with your hand like it's on a broom. And so. Tom does like a like a two-second silence, just stares at me, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's happening? He goes, you know people are watching. <laughs> and I said, ah, oh, I, now I do. Yeah, what are they thinking? Forgot. Doing yeah. yeah, people are watching. Last week, you had to buy something on eBay. I stole your credit card numbers off the camera. <laughs> a bunch of great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there are requests for something called the Godwin Cam. Oh, oh that's, that's a fun one. That's where I shake my guitar pick out of the Oh, guitar. all kinds of stuff. Man, that was the Pat best looking Godwin. for his glasses, glasses with her on his head, stuff yep, like that. the best that. Godwin episode ever. <laughs> Thank you very much. So t- the time now to check in with our history, is that correct? Yeah. Evidently, there's the music. Time now for today in history. <laughs> April 20th, of course, we've been talking about 420 yeah. all day. Yes. The first known performance uh, from Shakespeare was in 1611 of this famous Shakespeare play. You know which one it is, John? Hack, I don't, no. Hack, hack. Hmm. Oh, 420. Uh, Merchant of Venice. Uh, uh, was Othello. It, uh, it was, I would just say Othello. Wasn't it Macbeth, that famous line, do be or not do be? Hamlet. Yes. The joke stands, and it was Macbeth, oh, so it's really? a there double win. Wow. Is it about the baby pigs? Um, Hamlet? <laughs> 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 Macbeth, of course, Shh, the least it. successful McDonald's promotion ever. Uh, <laughs> the Macbeth? <laughs> I'd like the Macbeth. You know, there has used to be to called be. the filet fish Over the years, there has to be a, a Beth that has worked for McDonald's. You think they sure. called her Macbeth? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Uh, Missed opportunity, no. Uh, uh, that needed to be mentioned by me for some reason. Uh, 1862, Claude Bernard and this other guy spent the night in a field full of cows as they were working on their project. It's not called Bernardization. It's called... Uh, pasteurization. Right. Louis Pasteur. Pasteur. Uh, in 1944, this is... You'll like this, Jake. So why did he get the name? 
I don't know. It's kind of. I thought I'd emphasize that over the because everyone know. always talks about Louis. This poor right. guy, right, Mr. Shaw. He's yeah. overlooked. Yeah, he's out there homogenized you know, and brandonized or oh. whatever instead of pasteurized. Washing mm. cow balls all day. And <laughs> Louis over there taking. Well, you, that that is a tough game. Wow. What you do is you get a big cup and a yeah. cow ball. Yeah. You take it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just like the part two of that one. What was it? we were talking about? Oh, Paul Revere. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dawes. Whatever. He gets all the credit. Yeah. yeah. John Dawes. Okay, Na Nathan Dawes. Johnny Dawes. Here's one for Willie and Chick and Ace. Because maybe you'll know this. I don't know. It just says in 1944, the NFL legalized coaching from the bench. Where'd they coach before? I don't know. Maybe the parking lot. They were out on the field. <laughs> <laughs> parking lot in their cars. Yeah. Whispering in the QB's ear. I don't know. That's hey, hey. Player coaches. Throw. Your first two games of the season, we always had one scrimmage where the coach was just right behind you, yeah. like 15 oh, yeah. yards yeah. behind yeah. the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And just the feeling of getting called a dumbass immediately after messing up a play uh. always gets to you. Uh, and in front of another team. Because yeah. uh, your team, they were worth it. Uh, used to it when I would be called a dumbass. Oh. And whenever you go to the game, you've got the guy that thinks he's the coach sitting behind you. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that guy. Uh, let's see now. Oh, great movie, 1977. Oh, yeah. Going to be controversial. We'll see. Um, <laughs> Woody Allen uh, released the legendary movie. Josh, you know which one it is? Annie Hall. Annie Hall. Um, it's you a great know, comedy. La -di -da. There's a couple of hugely famous actors who have tiny, tiny parts in that movie. Yeah. Remember the guy on the phone going, I forgot, I my, do. I forgot my mantra? Oh, yeah. George C. Scott. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Jeff Goldblum. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, great movie. That is a funny, funny movie. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, this is a weird one. I'd forgotten about this. In 1979, Jimmy Carter was attacked by a swamp rabbit while fishing. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yes. I've got to look this up. There's yeah. such thing as a swamp rabbit? Yeah, it's a half rabbit, half swamp. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it lives in the swamp, mostly. Um, this is weird. In 2018, a court in Mexico barred sales of the tribute Barbie doll to Frida Kahlo. Mm-hmm. Why'd they bar the sales? I don't know. I, 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 uh, Eyebrow too big? Yeah. Too hairy? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Although, now, this, this is off topic, but coming up, I don't know if you saw this, because <laughs> of that new movie, they're going to do um, Barbie-flavored Fritos. Oh, uh, so. really? Interesting. <laughs> no, here, here, try it again. Try it again with, with Barbie-flavored Oreos. Try that. Well, that's not Frida Kahlo. That's it. Frito, uh, uh, Fritos, Fritos, Fritos. I didn't make that connection at all. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was asking us to do a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw the product that has a lot of flavor. I, I don't know why they pulled the uh, the, the Frida Kahlo Barbie doll. Mm, okay. Uh, but um, yeah. now, and there's a controversy about the Barbie movie because oh god, there's there a controversy is? about everything. The guy who plays Ken is like 42 and Ryan Gosling. Well, it's Ryan Gosling. But I know, but isn't Ken? 19 or isn't he a high school? Well, I don't think Margot Robbie is 19 no. either. <laughs> there really are people who are upset that Ryan Gosling's 42 and playing oh, Ken. Oh, <laughs> people don't have much to do. Yeah, no, they sure don't. And I read he's completely shaved. Neck down. Uh -oh. Oh, I think uh, phone call. This can't be good. Yes, sir. Ken doesn't have a penis either. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Mike Mark is right. Yeah. Yeah, he's he got that Led Zeppelin cover thing going yeah, on. Yeah, he's moved down there. Happy birthday, George Takai. I was born. San Francisco. I, I was, was born, born there. there. Thank you. Oh, my. Uh, things we learned today. Tom has found Dialogue Boost to watch movies. It's uh, it's on Amazon now, yeah. I think, yep. and soon to come to every... It lowers the music so you can right. hear what they're saying. I can't hear. <laughs> Help me. Uh, Tom... Uh, I'm 97. ...complained about... <laughs> Thanks for upping the age. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Tom can't be. He complained about not being able to walk around his new house yet naked because he doesn't have any blinds or curtains. Well, I have some, but not in a couple of key rooms, which well, I didn't find out until. It's, not, you ever go up to it's her? not like your neighbors are sitting on top of you. You ever go up to her and point at your groin and go, You want any of this before I put it away? Huh? You ever do that? Huh? Hey. Huh? Try that. You got huh? dibs? <laughs> Try that on your birthday. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Going once. Because <laughs> they go suck itself. <laughs> Going twice. There it was. Hey. Well, so 
cold to my left hand, apparently. <laughs> That's my old man, Chickster. Come on. It's 2.30. I'm about to take a shower in the guest room. <laughs> my shower's not working, you see. Uh, it ain't gonna. <laughs> could we? Is that sports? I could. This could be my last day. Nope, it's sports. It could be my We're last done. day. Okay. Say goodbye. Uh, goodbye, uh, Gracie. Goodbye, Gracie. Uh, goodbye, Ace. Uh, uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look at today's show on our YouTube channel.